A world defined by change and uncertainty, Daytona perseveres. The high banks of Daytona signify the beginning of a new season, a fresh start, an opportunity to start your 2024 campaign the right way. We're getting ready to see some crazy action. Daytona still stands as the cathedral of motorsports. It is synonymous with beginnings and will continue to offer unmatched opportunity. Tonight will require the right speed, stamina, and courage to find victory. We're going to race it over 190. Unbelievable. Welcome to Trucks Race Day from Daytona. The time has finally arrived for the Craftsman Truck Series to take on an iconic venue for tonight's race. There is nothing quite like Daytona. You see all the trucks are out there ready to go. It is an exciting one, no question about it. Every team wants to win this particular event. Welcome into race day here on FS1. I'm Caitlin Vinci alongside a pair of Daytona winners. I might add Trevor Bain, Todd Bodine. Great to see the two of you for another year, guys, back together again. Ready to get it on. I'm yes. ready. Let's do it. New season. What are you pumped up about for this, huh? I'm pumped up. You got it. This is Daytona. You know, we're the only professional sport in the world that starts their season off with the biggest game of the year. True. Right? This is our Super Bowl. This is Daytona. This is the race that everybody wants to win. If you've ever raced there, this is it. And these, the teams worked hard off, off season. The drivers has worked hard preparing, trying to get ready for the race. But guess what? All that preparation can go out the window if you make a mistake. Yep. You cannot make mistakes. Tonight right. is about that. And it's easy to do, right? It sounds simple. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> be there at the end. Well, guess what? We also have stage points on the line at each stage end. So now you have to race hard all night long. Mm -hmm. you got to find helpers. You can't do this on your own in speedway racing. You need somebody on that rear bumper pushing you if you're going to make a move. So there's so much chess going on as you're thinking about a, a speedway race. Uh, these drivers have to use their brain as much as they do their hands on that steering wheel. Tonight. High speed chess match, baby. That's, That's right. right. I'm getting fired up just listening listening to you guys talking about this. So every driver, of course, wants to win this race. So let's talk about some of these teams and who we should be watching for the event tonight. And I want to start with our reigning champion of Ben Rhodes. One win last year, seven top fives, 14 top tens. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, the eventual champion in the series. So what do we think about Ben Rhodes? Is it his night? What do you say? I think it can be. Absolutely. You know, I I'm the I'm a believer that, that speedway racing is all about being smart, right? It's not about being physical. It's about <laughs> being smart. And to me, Ben Rhodes is one of the smartest guys we have in our series. You watch him week in and week out, methodically taking his truck to the front, never puts it in a bad spot. And I think that this tonight could be his night. He's, he can do it. We're going to hear more from him because you guys sat down for some, some brews, oh, right? Yeah, we had a good time. All right. Absolutely. Well, a couple we're beers. On the, we're on the lookout for that. All right. What about this driver? I want to talk about Corey Heim. He had a breakout campaign last season. Three wins on the year with 12 top fives and a really solid average finish. He was also the regular season champion. So what do we think about Corey for tonight, Trevor? Yeah, I'm really excited to see what this team can put together as a whole this year. Remember last year, Tricon made the switch over to Toyota. This is their second year in that camp now. Corey Heim for our second year back at the same team. Uh, but this driver last year, much like Ben Rosie you were talking about, just had a lot of consistency. Only three yes. races all season long outside the top 10, which is incredible, but also three wins. You mentioned that regular season championship while he missed the race for being sick at Gateway and then came back to Phoenix to battle for that championship. I know he's got a fire in his eyes right now because of what <laughs> happened at Phoenix. Yeah, absolutely. The one that got away, he's ready oh, yeah. to go this season. We'll hear from Corey later on in the show. But what about this driver, Grant Enfinger? He too had a great season last year with three wins on the year, nine top fives, came up one spot short. He was the championship runner up. So Grant Enfinger, what do we think about him? He's going to be one of the guys for tonight. Oh, absolutely. You know, everything I just said about Ben, you can apply right to Grant. Right. But the other thing about Grant, he's got a lot of experience on speedways, 19 races between Daytona and Talladega, uh, finished 98% of the laps, only three at DNFs, but he's got two wins along the way. He understands how to get to the end of the race mm -hmm. and not put himself in bad position. Yeah, certainly that experience will help him tonight, no question about it. So as we have grown accustomed to seeing, there was plenty of movement that took place in the offseason within the truck series. Here's the long list of notable changes for 2024.
Remember KBM with 100 wins in the series? It's gone. Kyle cashed in late last year and Spire Motorsports has taken over. Chase Purdy is in the 77 and joining him for a sophomore season is Raja Karuth in Spire's 71 truck. There's also a rebuild over at McAnally Hilgeman Racing. The familiar number 43 of Daniel Dye joins the stable, as well as veteran Tyler Ankrum. That pair combines with Christian Eckes, who's coming off a breakout 2023 season. We saw Thor Sport Racing take the title at Phoenix. Check it, flag is out. It is Ben Roach. But even the reigning champions have changes this year. Haley Deegan is now in the Xfinity Series, and 18-year-old Jake Garcia takes her spot to partner with hard charger Ty Majeski and multi-time champs Matt Crafton and Ben Rhodes. Past champ Zane Smith and last year's standout star Carson Hosevar said Bon Voyage, climbing the ladder up to the Cup Series. That has front row motorsports with second generation driver Lane Riggs, a rookie in the 38 c And Nice Motorsports hands its race winning 42 truck to up and comer Matt Mills, who will partner with new full time teammate Bailey Curry. The names and numbers may have shuffled, but the drama and intensity will certainly remain the same. It's a lot to digest there. Many changes happened over the offseason. The last driver we saw, though, was Bailey Curry. Expectations for him this year? Uh, pretty high for me. You know, uh, at the end of last year, we got to see a little more. Bailey ran 11 races total and got better as the season went on. But the one thing that we don't realize about Bailey, he's, he's got a lot of experience. That's true. Uh, between yeah. the Cup Series, Xfinity Series, and Truck, he's got 167 races under his belt. So uh. he's got some laps. Now, those laps weren't all in good equipment, but the good thing about that is you learn how to drive at the back of the pack. You learn how to race, how to drive hard, and now that he's going to be in good equipment at Nice Motorsports, I expect them to be racing up the front. Yeah, and I feel like Bailey flew under the radar until last year where he shared a truck with Ross Chastain. Then the comparisons <laughs> were getting made, and, and there were times he yeah. actually ran better than maybe Ross in that truck. So he's done a great job. Uh, another young driver I want to talk about is Lane Riggs, though. Yes. Um, this kid has had very limited experience in the trucks. He's run six races, but two of those have been top tens, one a third-place finish, and then he ran three races for a colleague in Xfinity and picked up a top ten in one of those three. This 38 truck has battled for a championship the last couple of years. One this race at Daytona last year. So if you were a young driver trying to find the best opportunity out there, you were calling Bob Jenkins about this <laughs> truck last year. So Lane Riggs hit the hit the lottery here getting this truck for this season. Definitely going to keep an eye on Lane Riggs as he approaches the season. And we're talking about changes and there's quite a few at the front end of the grid. So let's check in with Regan Smith, our pit reporter all the way out there at Daytona International Speedway. Hey, Regan. Well, Caitlin, you guys are talking about changes there. I want to talk about maybe no changes. One guy that has not had any changes is that of the 98, Ty Majeski. And the results showed earlier today, of course, going out there and putting his truck on the pole, qualifying first. Things have stayed the same overall for this team. Same driver, same truck number, same team, same crew chief. That is all really good right now for Ty. He has a lot of confidence coming into this season because of that. Obviously, so strong last year as well. One change he will have, though, he's going to have a new engineer. Unfortunately, that engineer does not start until May of this year. He's got to graduate school first before he can come work for the race team. Therefore, Ty is pulling a little bit of double duty. He will be the engineer for the team, running the sim work and doing different things on the computer as well as driving it. A little bit of old school throwback. I'd love it. That is very interesting. Great insight there, Regan. We'll check in with you throughout the course of the show. Here's a look at how the front of tonight's starting grid is going to look. Here you see it. Ty Majeski on the pole. State of Wisconsin showing up. Ty Majeski yeah. there along with Johnny Sauter in row one. Cup regular Corey LaJoy shares the second row with newcomer Matt Mills making his first Daytona truck start. And it's Tyler Ankrum and sophomore Nick Sanchez in positions five and six. Here's what's in store on race day. Coming up just around the turn. One, two, three, four, hit it! He was inches from a title at Phoenix. Hear why Grant Enfinger didn't race dirty. And what the past Daytona champ expects for the season ahead with a new team. It was a breakout 2023 season for Christian Eckes, but find out what's fueling his anger headed into the new year. Plus, a pair of two-time truck champs break down the electric run to a title and what it's going to take to get a third. Todd Bodine doubles up with Ben Rhodes for a champion's chat. This is Trucks Race Day from Daytona. Oh, yeah, fuel for the soul.
Welcome back to Race Day on FS1, part of Speed Weeks, presented by Advent Health. With a beautiful look there at Daytona International Speedway. And what about Taylor Gray? He's in that 17 truck. His first Daytona start, if you recall, he was too young last year to compete in this event. He will start 12th for the race tonight. But some guys who are not a stranger to this race and winning in it would be this group right here. Johnny Sauter did it three times at Daytona from 2013 to 2018. Of course, Grant Enfinger got it done in 2020, and Ben Rhodes was able to get the win in 2021. Now, Grant Enfinger almost was a champion last year, coming up one spot short. But this season, he is focused on the big prize and doing it at his new home of CR7 Motorsports. We sent our Regan Smith to sit down with Grant and talk about what he learned from that championship race and his outlook for the new year ahead. Grant Enfinger, he's been racing in the series a long time. He's got a lot of respect amongst all of his peers. GMS, his team closes its doors. So Grant Enfinger, he has a ride full time for next year. We just don't know what it is. Regan, welcome to my new home. What do you think? I like it. You need a doorbell. I was standing out in the cold for about 20 minutes. I couldn't get in. What the heck? We saw you out there. This year has been his best year in his career. Grant very much could have a shot at this title. I want to start with the end of last season. I feel like we were in a, in a pretty good spot to, to come home with a championship. The chaos that, that ensued there was something nobody wanted. For Grant Enfinger, it's starting to look pretty good. It's Carson Hosevar in the fence. Enfinger was three miles away from a championship. NASCAR overtime. Enfinger gets hit. And Rose will get away with the lead. Here we go again. Big problems for Zane Smith on the restart. Green flag goes back in the air. And they're wrecking. Green, white, checker. And finger to the bottom of the back straightaway, racing for the title. It's not enough. Ben Rose wins the championship. I had quite a few people say, oh, I just should have ran through Ben there on the last lap. That never crossed my mind. It, it, it wouldn't have to this day. If, if I could have got to him and, and moved him out of the way and, and went on to win the championship, I absolutely would have. But it still bothers me that, that we weren't able to, to come home with it. But definitely that desire is burning that much harder to, to, to win a championship this year. You're the old guy now, one of the veterans and the leaders of the Truck Series garage. And in order to teach these guys and get them to race the right way, that, that you've got to be setting that example almost. I think that's that's how it was at, at one time. You got your shoulder <laughs> pulled a couple of times, as I have in, in the past. There's just such a different mentality now. I feel like everything is short term. Um, there's a lot of incentives to do dumb things. Although CR7 has been around for a while as a team, this year's kind of a re rebirth for them. What do the fans need to expect out of CR7 and Grant this year? My desire is for us to be a championship contender in year one. And I understand what that means if you're the outside looking in, but I'm on the inside and I, I truly believe that. Grant seems like his usual very confident self. Good interview there with Regan. What are your expectations for him with this new team? I totally agree with Grant. I think that they can be a championship contender for sure. You know, the one thing that's important about a team is the crew chief. Okay. Jeff Stankwitz, his crew chief this year, they have time together before. They've worked together. They've been teammates before. So there's familiarity there. They understand each other. And Jeff has put together an incredible group of guys uh, to surround this team and build this team. And whoever, they did the smartest things a single car or truck team could do. They got an alliance with McAnally, Hilgeman Racing. So it's almost like being a fifth truck but without all the headaches of the other four. <laughs> I think they got a shot at it. I think so, too. And really, you look at it and you're like, why does Grant Infinger need to go and build a new team? Well, last year was kind of the end of an era for a couple huge teams, KBM, Kyle That's Busch right. Motorsports, and GMS. Grant was one of the drivers at GMS along with Raja Karuth. Well, guess what? Those teams are no longer here. But Spire Motorsports bought KBM, as we saw earlier, and all that craziness yeah. going on. <laughs> and so they acquired two drivers. They got Raja Karuth from GMS, one of Grant's old teammates, and then they got Chase Purdy, two young drivers that barely missed the playoffs last year. Chase Purdy finished 11th in the points. I know that Raja, right here, you see this beautiful 71 truck. He wants to come out here, contend for at least making the playoffs this year, get his first top five. He could do that tonight here at Daytona.
We're going to definitely be keeping an eye on those Spire drivers as well. And speaking of that, Corey LaJoy, a very familiar That's face. Right, yeah. He is going to be out there in the race tonight. Here he is getting set. He will start third and a very good super speedway racer. So we will definitely keep an eye on him. And of course, he'll be racing in the Daytona 500 as well. And let's talk about that because Sunday it is the big day as the Great American Race returns. And the day will be a little bigger as Grand Marshal Dwayne The Rock Johnson will kick off the Daytona 500, that coverage begins. You smell what the rock is cooking. <laughs> that coverage begins Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern on FS1. You don't want to miss it. And still to come here on race day, we hear from the drivers on what it means to race and win at Daytona. Plus, we do check in with Christian Eckes from the track to hear his mindset on chasing a Daytona trophy. Christian's quest, all that more is coming up next. Welcome back to race day for the Craftsman Truck Series with a shot there of Daytona International Speedway. It's a busy place. The action and the energy is certainly picking up out there at Daytona. And Daniel Dye, he's about to start his sophomore season and is back in the number 43 again, but he has a new home. He's now full time at McAnally Hilgeman Racing. So let's take a look now at the MHR team starting positions. Tyler Ankrum, he is the best of the bunch, starting fifth. Daniel Dye is seventh. A little further back is Jack Wood and Christian Eckes. A lot of changes there this season. Eckes, though, he does return and he finished third in the last two races here with two different teams. And right now, Regan is standing by with Christian. Well, thanks, Kaylin. And it's been a lot of changes at a lot of teams. Another team that didn't have any changes was Christian Eckes, but you guys add some new cars, some new faces, some new guys driving with you over here. You are now the veteran, uh, veteran team member at your company. What's it like right now? Yeah, I was laughing earlier. It's actually my seventh year in trucks. It's hard to believe, but uh, yeah, to have some friends this year and to have some people to you know, help build this team is, has been a pleasure. And uh, I don't necessarily know if we have a fantastic truck tonight, but uh, I'm sure it'll be fine once we get in the draft. So uh, just looking forward to starting the season off today. You talk about not having a fantastic truck. Qualified 25th a little while ago. What do you have to do to make the right moves to get back to the front with it? I don't know. I mean, sometimes you almost feel like you have to do dumb stuff to get to the front, but and hope it works out. Hope you don't crash. But um, I don't know. We'll just be smart tonight and and try to make the right moves. Uh, historically, usually don't make the right moves, like like Talladega last year, missing a block for no reason. But um, I don't know. We'll have to see. Caitlin, I got a lot of confidence in what he's going to do tonight. Finish third place the past two Daytona races here. Thank you, Regan. Yeah, some good stats on the side when it comes to Daytona. So what do you think? Is he a favorite going into this year for the title? Yeah, I mean, we talked about drivers with fire. He barely missed making it to the championship four, and, and I felt like they were kind of a shoe-in to be in Phoenix battling for a championship with the way that they had run all year long. Bill McAnally hired Christian Eckes with the sole purpose of making his team a winning truck team, and they did that really quick last year. At Daytona, they came out swinging, running up front in both stages, finishing good. So I, I think this driver, you know, he's kind of found a home here with Bill McAnally. Yes. I don't know yeah. how long he wants to stay in the trucks, but I'm sure Bill wants to keep him around for a long time. Well, the thing that I'm, you know, we know they're going to come out and they're going to run well. Right? They're going to pick right up where they left off last year. The thing that worries me about the situation is adding those two other teams. When you have two race teams, it's very manageable. It's if you wreck a truck, it's easy to get it fixed at the time. The guys, but if you got four teams, Todd, that's a lot of help at Daytona. Well, <laughs> a yeah, lot of help. that's the, that's the benefit of it. That is the benefit. <laughs> but when you start wrecking trucks and things are happening and the, the guys in the shop get behind, yeah. man, that's really taxing on a team. But Christian's performance is going to stay spot on. We'll have to keep an eye on Christian Eckes as he tries to make his way through the field from the start of this race. Now, there is nothing quite like the season opener at Daytona International Speedway. It's a very special racetrack and one that every driver and team wants to win at. Here, the Truck Series competitors explain why this race stands out amongst the rest. I don't care who you are, Daytona is special. The Mecca of where it all started and there's so much history there. The people that came before us that made this sport what it is, that's like hallowed ground, right? It's the world center of speed. 
and one of the most popular racetracks in the world. It's probably the grandest racetrack as far as fan perspective, and even when you get in the truck, just the visuals, there's nothing like it in the sport. Go out on the track and it turns three and four for the first time, and you look up on the wall and you see Daytona, you know the history behind it and how much it means and how many people are watching and how big of a show it is. I always look forward to, to getting to Daytona every year, even though our crazy truck races are hectic, they're uh, chaotic. It's just such a challenge. I mean, I remember I thought, oh man, I got this thing finally, and about that time I get hooked in the right rear and up, upside down. Every time you think it's like, I got this, no, you don't. It's been my Achilles heel for sure. Much as I despise the place because I've never had any good luck there, I love going to the place every year. As a race fan, as a kid growing up, the goal is always to get to Daytona. You know, we all grew up watching races at Daytona and winning there is so special. It's a very, very tough race to win, but it's the highlight of our season. I mean, that's the Super Bowl of our sport. It's kind of a known thing that everybody has an opportunity to win there. If you survive and you make it to the end, then you can have a chance to win and ultimately change the trajectory of your career. And it's become the pinnacle of our sport. There's no better place to kick off the season. Ben Rhodes is definitely right about that. No better place to kick off the season. The two of you have been able to win at Daytona. The pressure, though, it's high when you roll in there to compete for a win. It is. You know, I, I grew up at Daytona, right? We, <laughs> we used to take our family vacations down there to nice. watch the races. And then, then I grew up. I was about 23 years old, and I got to go there as a crew member. For three years in a row, I changed tires on pit road. Well, growing up there, it was no big deal. It was just Daytona. Yeah, it was cool and everything. But all that changed when I first time I got to drive there and I rolled off pit road, it was like, holy cow, I'm riding on Daytona Speedway. <laughs> I cannot believe this. It was a dream come true. And every driver wants to go to victory lane. And that kind of pressure is incredible. Right. These, these guys crawl in these trucks at night and it's it's tough. I need to you. see that footage of him changing tires, by the <laughs> way. I, I was to, good, too. I need to see that. Was that. Good. All right, let's talk about some of the notable drivers who are starting deeper in the field. Take a look at this list. It's pretty stacked with some big yeah, names. Grant Enfinger, Ben Rhodes, Christian Eckes, who we just heard from starting 25th, Corey Heim, Ty Dillon. A uh, familiar name joining us back in the truck series, but is this a disadvantage for them or not really? Well, yeah, you always want to have a fast truck, right? And qualifying <laughs> shows kind of the speed you have, uh, but I would not not expect these drivers to stay back there for long. You do have to be patiently aggressive and, and make calculated risks throughout this race. I would say a few laps to evaluate where, what everybody's doing, but after that, when you see that many strong drivers and experienced drivers around you, you're going to get together and you're going to figure out a way to pick your way through the field. Some of the young, inexperienced guys are going to leave the door open, and these guys will be in line. They'll pick them off. I would not be shocked to see almost all those guys in the top ten by the end of the stage. He's shaking his head. What do you say? I couldn't disagree more. <laughs> okay, Ooh, Trevor. First well, disagreement back here of the year. Stage one, <laughs> Daytona, you don't just pull out and pass. Yeah, and other guys have, have to make it, but you got to have <laughs> the third lane, and the third lane goes nowhere here at Talladega. All right. I'm going to tell you, there's not going to be any of those guys in the top ten at the end of the first stage. If they're in the top twenty, they've done really well. Close to the top ten, but it's tough to pass here. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch those guys, though, trying to it's make their to way. find out who's right here, right? I can't wait to see who's right. Only one of you can be. All right, still to come here on race day. What about Corey Hine? His hunger within. We're going to hear from him next. He's going to be with old Regan Smith and Ben Rose. I know he sat down with you, Todd. I'm looking forward to that conversation. That's yeah, coming we have up a little time. later. Yeah, I know you had some beers, got to hang out. Ben Rose, of course, the reigning champ. We'll hear from him next. Welcome back to race day for the Craftsman Truck Series. It's the season opener out at Daytona International Speedway. You see all the trucks out there on the grid. We're getting closer and closer to racing a big trophy on the line as well. So many things to see and do in Daytona this week. So Michael Waltrip, he headed down to the Craftsman Activation to check out some great Craftsman products, hang with the fans. He also hung out with the 2023 truck champion, Ben Rhodes. And it looks like Michael had a great time in a very nice fire suit as well well in the process. So speaking of Michael, it's time now to bring in the guys calling all the action in the booth for tonight's event in Daytona and say hello to Adam Alexander, Michael Waltrip, Phil Parsons. And Michael, you lost the fire suit for a regular suit. Looking sharp, my friend. <laughs> 
Well, thank you. I like to dress up when I'm on TV, and I'm feeling really good about tonight's race. You know what I would say? Is it, is it 730 yet? Because I am ready to get this <laughs> season started. And when you look at the field for this event, it's truly amazing. So let's do a little youth versus experience. And, Michael, since you've been telling me all week how Corey LaJoy is going to win tonight, why don't you take the experience side of things? Well, first of all, Adam, I am so excited to be kicking off this awesome weekend in Daytona. It's my favorite weekend of the whole year, and the trucks are going to get it started. And Corey LaJoy, like I said, is going to win this race. And I'm going to tell you why. In the Cup Series, he has eight top ten finishes. All eight of them on drafting tracks and four of them right here at Daytona. I did my little grid walk last night before the duel, and I talked to him. He said, Mike, I love this place. I cannot wait to race tomorrow night. He had a good run last night. He's solid. He's fast. He knows exactly how to get it done on the big tracks. Starting in third position, Phil, so we know he's got a fast truck. I'm going to, in your honor, take old age and Lord Corey LaJoy. You can have the kids. <laughs> Well, I'm going to take uh, the other side of the spectrum, a guy that's never been here before, 21-year-old Lane Riggs. His pedigree is extremely stout. His dad is a five-time winner in the truck series. He won four Xfinity races. That's Scott Riggs. Lane Riggs is a former short track national champion just two years ago in 2022. And, and how important is that? Josh Berry was the national champion two years prior to that. Lane Riggs, I just talked to Kevin Harvick, who drive, Kevin, Lane Riggs drives for Kevin Harvick in a short track car. He said he's the one, along with Rodney Childers, that got that short track car figured out. We were lost. He knows how to work on the cars. He's really talented as a driver. He's somebody that we're going to keep an eye on all year long. He may be only 21 years old and be a rookie, but he's driving the 38 truck that is one here the last two years with Zane Smith behind the wheel. So much to watch for tonight. We'll see you guys bottom of the hour. Caitlin. Thank you, Adam. Great insight there from you all. We look forward to hearing you on the call for the race tonight. So, Corey Heim, I want to talk about Corey Heim for a moment. Guys, what are you thinking about his potential for a win tonight? Well, I mean, I've gotten to work with him a lot this offseason, <laughs> so I hope he does really good. Uh, but, no, I, I like Corey. I like his demeanor. I think he's trying to learn on these drafting tracks. He did win in Atlanta. That's where his first win came from. Hasn't done that yet at Daytona. But look at his team. Tricon has five trucks. We keep talking about power and numbers and how you need help. When you have five trucks out there, four teammates to work with you. When you make a move and you know somebody's going to go with you, that gives a lot of confidence. But his team is one of the teams we keep talking about change. It's one of those groups, like Regan said, that's still together working in the right direction. And you're helping him now. You're giving him insight. I see you I'm the trying phone to. Yeah, talking we, to we him, giving him all the advice. I don't know how you know, much right? help it is. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> probably not much, to be honest, Todd. No, not don't much. say that. I'm sure you're making a huge difference. But yeah, Corey Hyman, mean, he's one of the most experienced ones. He certainly is going to be. The well, solid that, pick for tonight. That's one thing that I've said all last year about Corey Heim. This young man is smart. And he can get it done, and he's, he's good at it. Well, that question on the screen, it's, how hungry is he, right? C Carson Hosobar, Corey Heim, we remember that fierce battle yeah, in absolutely. Phoenix. That's leaving him really hungry for this season. All right, we've been talking about him. Let's hear from him. He's standing by with Regan at the track. Caitlin, Caitlin Corey Heim just getting introduced to the fans here at the racetrack, getting ready to go do the ride around and get in your truck. I want to know, last year, a great season. Does that raise the bar and the expectations for this year now? Uh, 100%. We had a great year last year, like you mentioned, and I feel like we're so far along better than we were this time last year. So uh, super proud of Tricon Garage, Toyota Racing for everything they do, and can't wait to get on track. Good luck tonight. Go go take this ride. We don't want them to put you in the back or anything. Get, get in that truck. Hurry up. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Regan. Okay, so there's a Ford in the pool tonight, followed by a number of Chevrolet trucks. So where are the Toyotas? We have a look with tonight's Toyota team update. Here are their starting positions. Starting eighth, best of the group, is Tanner Gray. And you see Tony Brightingen there, along with Taylor Gray, Dean Thompson, Corey Heim, who we just heard from starting deeper in the field, 26 for tonight's race. It's, it's Tony Brightinger is making another truck series start. This is her fourth one. She will start 13th. Of course, she runs full time in the ARCA series, pulling double duty for tonight. Two races, because we've got the ARCA race following us on FS2 tonight. But what do you think of her? She's yeah. been impressive. You know, guys. I'm excited to see how she grows in a full time season in the ARCA Menard series. Uh, running a part time schedule in anything can be challenging. This year, she's going to get to be on some bigger tracks and really, you know, get in a rhythm there. And so I, I think this will be a really growing year for her. Being at Tricon and leaning on drivers like Corey Heim that have been around the series for a few years, having David Gillen as your boss that you can go to and ask questions. <laughs> she's going to learn very fast. But what she's done well is she has built a brand, one of the she largest has. social media followings <laughs> My goodness, in yes. our sport. And uh, we job. all know how important that is to continue to be a huge part in this sport. Yeah, I, you know, tonight in particular for her is going to be such a big learning curve. 
everything she's done in ARC on speedways, forget about it. This truck racing is totally different, so she needs to just settle in at the start of the race and figure out what's going on. Yeah, we look forward to seeing how Tony Breidinger will do in the event tonight. We'll keep an eye on her still to come here on race day. Ben Rhodes, he's now a two-time champion in the series and has joined some elite company. You two got to hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had a lot of fun down here. Yeah, yeah. Saloon or what? Some what beers? Beers? Yeah, two bucks, two bucks saloon. We have. Yeah, for two championships. You see what we did there? <laughs> That story and more coming up next. of Daytona International Speedway. It is a special place and business is picking up in the season opener for the Craftsman Truck Series race that will be starting momentarily and we look forward to it. And Ty Majewski we know is looking forward to it as well. Starting on the pole is second career one at Daytona. We'll have to see how he fares. Matt Crafton though, he's a former champion of course in the series but still looking for his first Daytona win. A little bit hard to believe. He's starting 11th for the race tonight but he's part of some elite company and take a look at it the guys have been able to win multi championships in the truck series ron hornaday a four-time champion he is the most jack sprague on the list matt crafton with three apiece then tom bodine and ben rhodes both have two to their credit so ben rose he is now a part of some elite company and no better person to sit down and talk with him about his second title than our own resident two-time champion todd bodine the two met up at a saloon outside of charlotte to talk truck series titles Hey, Ben Rhodes. Oh, what's going on? What are you doing, buddy? Old two time now. How are you? Yeah, yeah. same to you. Th <laughs> thanks for meeting me here. Two Buck Saloon, right? Two time guys right here. Twos and twos. Right. I like it. Clever. Right, well, let's You're go clever. have a beer. Only one for you, though. <laughs> yeah. Hit it. What's going on? I ain't seen you in forever. Yeah, Four months. Just ready to get in the race car again. It's funny, like. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Race cars? Race trucks. Truck. Sorry. Oh, I, how many years have you been doing this? Yeah, right, too right, many. Right. Yeah. You know how it is. This time of year, you just get itchy. Like, there's something that is, like, propelling your whole self. You start to say, man, can I still do this? You watch your competitors. They're doing the chili bowl, start the snowball. Yeah. Yeah. What a drive by Ben Rhodes. Second career championship. That race was uh, interesting to say the least. Yeah, I, I think about how wild that race was, right? Like just chaos. What are we eight Six, wide? Seven, eight wide. Here we go again. Going into that race, you weren't the favorite. Oh, or no. even close <laughs> to being thought of as the favorite. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of parallels between the first championship and the second one. We were the underdog in 2021, for sure. But it's a grind every single year, and we just don't ever lose focus. Now, after winning two championships, the story's the same. Anything less than that sucks. <laughs> like, oh. When you and Rich are together, it's almost like magic happens. <laughs> Rich is really, really good at seeing things abstractly. So when everybody else is focused on A, he sees B as a clear path. He's fine with rolling the dice. Oh, yeah. You got a lot of teammates. How do you lean on it? Well, what's fun is each driver kind of is in their own little realm. Crafton always has really interesting tidbits of information that are kind of obscure, but are very helpful. Stuff you've taught me in the past. Okay. Uh, we won't get into that because it helped me, and I don't want the competition <laughs> to know about it. Ty comes from this late model background. He's still, like, kicking butt doing that. And, uh, well, Jake's new. I don't know what to work with on him yet. I was born to run, baby. Ben Rhodes' championship celebrations have kind of become epic. Well, here's the thing. I think everybody sees those, and they're like, oh, that Ben Rhodes, he knows how to party. Who? No, I really don't. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm getting thirsty. We need a couple of beers. Only well, one for me. <laughs> no, you're two time. You gotta have oh, two great. beers. All right. Archers can't hang with the big dogs. No. Yeah, I learned that pretty hard there at the championship. Number three, you won't do that. Yeah, we're gonna just chill out. Yeah. At 
loved that interview there with the two of you. Did he only have one beer or did he have two? He only had one because yeah. he had to drive to the airport. He's got to work on his lightweightness yeah. there a little bit. <laughs> he is a lightweight. See, he admits it, though. But he has been so impressive over the last several years in the truck series. You think he picks up where he left off and, and potentially could get a third championship? Uh, definitely potentially championship, but I think they're going to be better this year. You can tell by looking and listening to Ben, he's in a good place right now. He's he's loving life. He, he loves being a dad, and they got another one on the way. Yeah. And, and his race team is in an incredible spot right now. They, they're more prepared going into this season than they have been in the last three years. Each team has four trucks ready to go for the next four races. They're ready to go. And being back with Rich, I mean, he knows what him, we have all know, what him and Rich together can do. It's magic. It truly is. And to have, and I talked to Rich at Daytona yesterday. Rich has really improved his team. He's got a different engineer. He's got some new guys in there. He thinks he's got a better team this year than he did last year. So Ooh, I expect a lot from him. That could be dangerous. Then. It could be. <laughs> yeah, and we know the Truck Series is a great place for young drivers to groom, you know, be groomed, have their talent you know, come into its fullness before mm -hmm. they move on to Xfinity and, and Cup Series. But Thorsport has like a different mentality. They've got these very mature drivers. I'll set up nicely for Matt Crafton. <laughs> and they have you know, Ben Rose with nine, his, on his ninth season this year. So just so much that they've learned over the years, so much experience. And racecraft, racecraft just continues to develop mm -hmm. as you age as a race car driver. So, you know, Jake Garcia coming over as a young guy, he has so many people to lean on there. Yes. Ty Majeski is an amazing race car driver. So that's the strength there. I wouldn't say this team always has the fastest trucks, but their drivers find a way to be there at the end, and that's exactly what Ben Rhodes did last yep. season. And to your point, a lot of depth to that race team, no question about it. So where are they starting for tonight's race? Take a look at their starting spots. Here they are, Ty Majeski, as we talked about, it is the pole sitter, Matt Craft in the past champ, starting 11. 11th, Jake Garcia, 16th, and Ben Rhodes. We will be watching as he comes from 24th. Now, the aerial coverage tonight is provided by Goodyear, powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. And we're getting closer to racing, guys. I cannot wait. This is going to be exciting. All the trucks are out there on the grid. It's almost go time, guys. You pumped? I'm pumped. I'm speechless. I'm speechless. Yeah. That's a bad thing for TV shows. You can't be speechless. Yeah, you not be pumped. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> The time has arrived for the trucks begin their season at an iconic Florida racetrack. Two and a half miles in length. It's big, it's fast, it's wide open. Anybody can win this race. Here we go from the world center of racing. Don't make a mistake. You have to be practically perfect all night long. Yeah, man. I'm fired up, man. Are you kidding me? This racing is intense. It's crazy. Oh! It's a race win every driver wants to have. That will certainly get you fired up for a Daytona race. I know that young man is probably excited for it. Raja Caruso starting 20th. What do you think about his chances at getting to the front, get a win? Yeah, as we talked about earlier, Raja's had a new team at Spire Motorsports there. He's got HendrickCars.com on board. Yes. A paint scheme, maybe Kyle Larson's run a little bit. So I'm sure he's fired up to get this truck to the front. And he can do it. He's looking for that first top five, though, as I mentioned earlier. So he's going to want to get, he wants to get to the front. Though. What about this driver? He is no stranger to the series. A veteran, Stuart Friesen. You think he can get it done? today start 17. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anybody can get it done. But, you know, the thing about Stewart <laughs> right now is he's excited for the season. He's he's revamped his team, brought new crew chief in, Jilly, Jimmy Villeneuve. And, uh, hey, that's a tough one. Yeah, We're all getting yeah, tongue-tied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pass on that. <laughs> All right, Nick Sanchez, he is starting six, had such an impressive rookie campaign last season. What do you think we might see out of him tonight? Yeah, Brian Patty was his crew chief last year, or worked at the team that he was at last year on another truck. And, you know, talking to Brian, he just had so much to say about Nick Sanchez and his raw ability. I raced against him at Homestead, and he was aggressive. you got to yeah. race a little bit differently yeah. at Daytona, but I think Nick Sanchez can get it done. All right, time now for our race picks who we believe can get it done in the season opener. I'm going first this time, and I'm going with a driver that we heard from, Christian Eckes, who had such a solid season last year. I think he starts out the year with a win. What do you say to that? <laughs> well, you picked him, so you better hope that's right. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, obviously. What do you, I, what I you say picking? I'm picking somebody different. I'm, okay, gonna go yeah, with, uh, I'm going with my buddy Corey Heim. We've been Heim working time. on this for the last couple months, and I'm hoping he can get it done, Todd. Solid. Well, you, you know, you know that I believe experience is king on speedways. Yes. So I'm going with the oldest guy in the field, 
Johnny Sauter yes. is going to get his fourth Daytona trophy oh, tonight. Oh, he's not starting hey, on the front you row know or anything. I love yeah. a Johnny Sauter yeah. pick. Three solid picks. That. We'll have to see who actually gets the first pick correct of the year. It's always a big bragging rights. We're getting closer to racing, so it's time now to go Daytona for pre-race ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise as you are able and remove your hats as the Keystone Heights High School Army Junior ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Here to offer tonight's invocation, please welcome worship leader from Riverbend Academy, Howard Evans. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to you tonight and first want to thank you for allowing us to see another day by your grace. We pray for comfort and peace for those who are affected this week by violence, specifically in Kansas City. This is another reminder of how we need to turn our hearts to you and find our ultimate hope in you. Tonight, Father, we ask for safety for these drivers as they compete tonight. Give them an alertness and a calmness to them that would allow for a great night of racing. Allow us as fans to enjoy seeing the gifts you've given them on display. Lastly, we pray for our soldiers here and abroad, our first responders, and others who lay down their lives daily so that we can enjoy nights like this. We ask all of this in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the Melbourne High School Chorus. Oh, say. It's Daytona, it's night racing, it's the season opener for the truck series. It doesn't get much better than this, no, does it, guys? I love Daytona under the lights. Absolutely. The best. And someone is gonna get the big trophy at the end, of course. So we're closer and closer to racing. So now we gotta join the voices in the booth calling all the action. And we now say hello to Adam Alexander. Thank you so much, Caitlin. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series has been coming to Daytona since 2000. Tonight marks the 25th time they've opened their campaign here. The offseason is over. It's time for the tailgaters to go back to work. Daytona is unlike anything else. Within these walls, history has been made. Two in a row at Daytona. First career win. Anything can happen at Daytona. And with a chance at victory on the line, nothing is out of the question. This place, it's something special. Now is the time to make your mark. When you grow up driving a stock car, you dream of racing at Daytona for 36 drivers in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series tonight. For one of them, that dream could become a reality. 
So good to have you with us on this Friday night. Welcome into the broadcast booth, everybody, with Michael Waltrip, Phil Parsons. I'm Adam Alexander. Here we go with the 2024 season. Michael, how do you measure the magnitude of this night for all these drivers? Adam, it's just so hard to put into words. We interviewed Lane Riggs yesterday, his first trip here, and he almost came to tears just talking about this opportunity. I grew up in Kentucky, and the first time I came through that tunnel, I looked over to the left and saw those banks, and I, like, marveled at them. What would that be? like to even get a chance to race on them never dreaming of winning here just dreaming of coming here and then the win became a reality and this place is just that special i'll always be known as a daytona winner and that's what these guys tonight are racing for they will be known as a daytona winner if they can just get to victory lane but man phil what a challenge it's going to be this is going to be a wild truck race stay tuned you won't believe what you're going to see you talk about all the emotions the highs and lows and everything that comes with winning here so with that what does experience mean tonight phil? well we as you mentioned we've had 24 previous runnings of this race only twice has as a driver won here in his first trip. Michael, you won the one of those 22 truck weight races, but you had already won two Daytona 500s. A lot of guys that have won here have had the experience, and one of the guys I want to look at is the guy that's won the most here in the truck series, and that's that 45 truck of Johnny Sauter. He's not a regular anymore, but he gets it done. He's one of the best we've ever had. Johnny's starting second, and oh, by the way, how many times do you think he started second when he won here? I I'm going to say twice. Twice, exactly. <laughs> so he's looking to make that a three-peat of his four wins. And another guy, He's going to be right next to that 45 of Johnny Sauter, and that's Corey LeJoe. Michael talked about during race day, that's, that's his pick. He's so good at this racetrack. He led the most laps here in the race last year. I think Corey LeJoy could get it done. I'm going with experience tonight over the youth. So many great storylines in this field this evening. So to tell some more of those, let's head trackside and hear from our pit reporters, Regan Smith and Amanda Busick. We start things off with Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Adam. And coming off of what Phil was saying, one of the drivers that's going to be leaning into experience tonight is that of your now two-time champion, Ben Rhodes. Issues in qualifying. We'll see him starting from the rear of this field tonight. But Ben said the old him would have been upset that his teammate was in the number one spot in time. Majeski, but the new him went back to the hauler, made a steak, made a potato, and said he had so much confidence in his team that they will be a player at the end of this race. If there was an issue, he's happy it happened here in Daytona. Regan? Well, Amanda, Ben Rhodes carries momentum into the season as the champion. The other guy carrying a lot of momentum is the one who won the season finale at Phoenix, Christian Eckes. And four wins last year. Things were very strong for him in his first year with McNally Hilgeman Racing. He's looking to better that this season. He knows this team. He knows his group of guys. They are very confident in what they're going to do. And even though they've added some teams, he is now the leader at this company. Look for big things out of him tonight. And all season long, he starts 25th. A little bit of work to do here this start of the race we will be entertained watching that 19 drive through the field and he's trying to join this list of elite winners at daytona in the truck series Carl edwards made a statement early in his career that he was going to be hard to guard when it comes to nascar bobby hamilton another great racer that went to victory lane here in daytona how about our buddy tabo ryan back to back here at daytona for two wins and you want big stars? I say Michael Waltrip. Two <laughs> Daytona 500s. You also got that truck win, Michael. Yeah, there's little Macy in victory lane with me. A special feeling. I don't care if it's a truck or a car. Watch your race at Daytona. Nothing better. As Kyle Busch got it done, too. Kyle's win coming here 10 years ago. Who delivers on this Friday night? It's just about time to find out. Let's go trackside now and fire the engines at Daytona. Daytona International Speedway. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. Are you ready to get the Fresh from Florida 250 started? Here to give the command to fire engines is Fresh from Florida's executive chef and culinary ambassador, Justin Timonary. Take it away, Justin. Drivers, set your engines! They call it the world center of racing for a reason. There's a certain magic that goes in the air when we see the green flag. And we'll have that next on FS1.
Great night for racing here in Daytona Beach, Florida. Season opener for the Craftsman Truck Series. And the trucks rolling off as they begin their quest for a win in race one of 2024. Keep your eye on Corey Heim. Won the regular season championship a year ago, but he comes from 26 tonight. Got to take care of things as he moves through the field. Nick Sanchez started on the pole a season ago. A little more ground to cover here this evening, but the second year driver out of Florida, no doubt going to be a player. He goes from the sixth position. And then there's Matt Mills, one of the great stories from qualifying this afternoon. Outside second row, he was impressive the first time that he's been full time in the Craftsman Truck Series. Let's get to our Craftsman track description. 2.5 miles in length. The turns banked at 31 degrees. Trial with 18. It gets a little dicey through the trial and the box straightaway. These trucks are really uneasy when they're not loaded up in the banks. So uh, watch for some action there. Uh, what a what a special place this is, Phil. Yeah, let's take a look at our race analysis. You can see this race is 100 laps, 250 miles. Stage 1, 20 laps. Stage 2, 20 laps. Stage 3, 60 laps. And that means we will have a pit stop during that final stage. You see the pit window 30 to 35 laps. Caution flags will extend that a little bit. And the winner of the last two of these was Zane Smith. And it's crazy to think, but strategy could very well be a part of the equation tonight here at Daytona. Well, one guy's playbook that's wide open right now is Rich Lucius, the champion crew chief. He's starting in the back, so he can make, play strategy any which way he likes. Now we get our Craftsman starting lineup. You saw the front row there, Ty Majeski, six career pole alongside Johnny Sauter. There's Matt Mills. Phil talked about the opportunity he has and how excited he is. Nick Sanchez will row from, row from the outside of row three. Back in row number four, how about Daniel Dye? Our, our, extra cameraman usually in Tanner Gray who finished second here last year. Bailey Curry, a crew guy turned race car driver, a lot of talent for him and Thad Moffitt, Richard Petty's grandson. Why don't we see if we can talk to our defending champion here in the Craftsman Truck Series. Ask him what two he, time, two ask, time. Ask him what he's going to do going to the back. Hey Ben Rhodes, Phil Parsons up in the Fox booth along with Michael Walter and Adam Alexander. You got a copy? Hey guys, got you loud and clear. Well, buddy, uh, you didn't qualify all that great, and then you had actually had to do some work to your truck and move into the back. But when you won here, you were you started in the 20s. Are you worried about anything? How are you going to get back to the front? Yeah, not worried about it at all. I mean, if you're going to have a problem with qualifying, this is the place to do it. So uh, I'm not too worried. We're going to get back up to our initial starting spot here, and I've got some friends around me. So we've got a plan to try to get to the front. Uh, it's just a matter of getting together and making that happen. Has Rich shared with you his strategy yet? What he's what he's going to tell you to do? Yeah, so apparently that's ever evolving. Uh, if I do my job and I get back up into the position we think we should be in, uh, that's going to change things for him. So I just got to do a good job, get up front. And he's going to have to assess things as they go. Well, Phoenix was awesome. Congratulations, two-time chance. Go get you a Daytona win tonight. Yeah, thank you guys so much. We said strategy is important. Evidently for some, it's a bit of a moving target tonight, huh? <laughs> Let's take one more trip down to pit lane, start things off with Amanda. One of the guys that's going to be looking to limit those moving targets is the guy in that 38 front row motorsports truck driven by Lane Ricks from Bahama, North Carolina, who is making his debut tonight. You know, it's big shoes that he's going to have to fill. And the guy that drove that truck prior in Zane Smith. But I asked Lane as he was climbing into his truck, one word to describe this moment. Smiled really big, looked around, looked into the stands and said, I have two in awe. Regan? Well, man, it was a wild offseason for Grant Enfinger in the number nine truck. At the end of last season, of course, GMS Racing shuts down. Grant lands at CR7 Motorsports, owned by Cody Rowa, who is also in the field tonight. Grant told me he is super excited about this opportunity and about being a part of this team. He said it's different than anything he's ever done before because he had to help build this team. He has helped do all the things during the offseason, whether it's moving shop or being involved with it. And oh, by the way, they were able to bring in a championship crew chief in Jeff Stankiewicz. Keep an eye on this team this season. Grant Enfinger is going to turn some heads. Ten career wins for Grant Enfinger coming at ten different racetracks. One of them right here at Daytona as we talk about past winners that happened in 2020. And now our other onboard camera for the night, Michael. Yeah, and our other in-race reporter, Daniel Dow, always finds the action and shows it to us with his onboard 
race to stop suicide camera. We'll get some great shots here as they roll down pit road, checking that pit road speed. That's what they're doing now. He's got his eye on the tachometer just to see where he's at. And a great start for Daniel in seventh, too. Tyler Ankrum in the 18. Let's listen to team radio. Have a good race. Feel it. Obviously, other than me not wrecking the thing, keeping in the front. You're the most important guy all night long, so counting on you. Have a good race. Thank you, boys, for building me a fast truck. To win this damn thing in Eddie, I'll be following your lead all night long. Ankrum, right here a season ago, finished top 10, did get a stage victory. The 18, I anticipate, should be fast. But Eddie DeHunt is who he was talking about, and that's that's his spotter. That's an experienced Ooh. spotter, one of the best up on top of the roof. What role do the spotters play? Uh, it's, it's critical. It's crucial. There's going to be so much conversation, way more conversation here at Talladega and Atlanta than you'll hear anywhere else. You want to know what's forming behind you, how it looks in front of you. You're going to lean on those spotters for all kinds of information. And they're all standing together in the spotter stand. And you, need to, and you need to know where all the competitor spotters are because you may have to go have a conversation with them about working together. And, and there they are. And this is how much trust, Adam, those drivers have to have in those spotters. Turn three is about a half a mile away. They're up there giving them advice and direction needing to clear by inches and they're that far away. But the experience and the knowledge they have on that roof is why they're able to make those calls. Aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green flag to the checkered flag. And every mile in between, Goodyear more driven. Goodyear blimp over Daytona. If you can't get fired up about NASCAR when you see that site, this beautiful crowd, the infield's packed, and we're getting ready to go racing at Daytona. Everything's right with the world when that happens. Great crowd for tonight's season opener in the truck series. Lights shining brightly on Daytona International Speedway. Our pace truck will pull down the pit lane. And the field will be in the hands of our pole sitter, Ty Majeski. He takes the inside lane. Outside of him, Johnny Sauter. Let's get 2024 underway at Daytona. Looked like Johnny Sauter spun his wheels a bit, but that got him a push from behind. Matt Mills hit him in the back and shot him right up beside our pole sitter, Ty Majeski. That bright yellow truck there about sixth in line on the inside thought about jumping inside the 41 of Bailey Curry thought better of it. They cannot lock, but lock bumpers. Rumor that guys and NASCAR's told them they're going to keep their eyes on that. You can bump, but you can't lock. And this is some tight racing already. Get ready to watch this all night long. My heart rate will go sky high because it looks like they could wreck at any moment the way they bounce around. Mine's already there. <laughs> Two by two by two, 10 rows, maybe 12 rows deep on the opening lap. Begin to pay attention too, if you're at home, watch how these trucks bob around, especially off the turns. That's what causes them to get in trouble. They get loose, they, they overcorrect, but it's just a difficult balancing act of how to hang on to a truck. Remember these trucks will go about 10 miles an hour faster than what they went in qualifying. You get three wide in the back. Tom Majeski has assumed the lead, taking it away with Corey LaJoy behind him. There's Ankrum with a big push. Look at that, three wide. Red Holmes at green number 32 with a little help from Lane Riggs in the yellow 38. Corey Heim was back there. Christian Eckes, drivers we anticipate will be at the front before the night is over. And that, that yellow line, remember, you cannot go below that yellow line to advance your position. You saw Majeski up off the bottom there, exiting the corner. That means the truck was a bit out of control on him, but you cannot go below that yellow line. So he will try to stay pinned directly to it so that no one could get on the inside of him. A lot of the drivers told me that this racetrack has, has got some more bumps than it used to have through the trioval and Rayleigh over just going in turn number three. I don't I don't like what I'm seeing from Majeski early. He can't keep it pinned. I'd want to be right down, down on the bottom, but he's coming off the corner about a half truck blink up. This is tight racing. Teammates working together in that outside lane. Sauter getting some drafting help from Matt Mills in the 42. 
And another one of their Chevy friends right behind him. The two is Nick Sanchez. Oh, Fat Moffitt back there. Matt Crafton got a hold to the bumper of that bright, petty blue truck and got him out of the groove. You can see how far he's dropping back. Look at all the damage to the 42 of Matt Mills in the front of that truck. You can and see he, it on the outside. He's the lead truck on the outside. And if there's damage like that, Phil, he can't lead a line. He'll be able to draft okay still, but if it's hurt, which it is, you can see the gap there. That hood could blow off. Wrinkled up big time. Sauter, his teammate, drops down in front of Ty Majeski. Now he controls that inside lane. And that's why Mills has fallen back. He doesn't have the aerodynamic sleekness that he had at the start, and he'll continue to drop. I, I think the two middle hood pins are not fastened right now. I don't think that hood will last long. We'll see. And he's trapped in that oh. outside lane. Sanchez tried to dive in that hole, but there just wasn't quite enough time. They need to go to the outside. There goes Sanchez. And it's hard to explain how much pressure is on the nose of that Chevrolet truck. And you can see he's dropping like a bag of rocks. Those guys split him, and he's in trouble. They can repair that. He could come back. But right now, he just needs to fall to the back and hope to hang on. If you're going to have a problem, have it early. Stage breaks at lap 20 and lap 40. We will get cautions and should be able to put himself in position to come down, make repairs, stay in the game. He's fallen back. 20th or so, but he's in line now and he's on the bottom. That hood will have a lot of turbulence at it right now because of the wind coming off the other trucks. Watch for it to fail, those hood pins to fail and that thing blow up. This is so intense. This early in the race, these guys in front are thinking thanking their teams for giving them fast enough trucks to sort it out and get in single file. I'm anxious to see what that outside lane can do now. They've gathered themselves up. Sanchez towing them around in the two. Behind him, the 15 of Tanner Gray, and right behind him, Matt Crafton, the three-time series champion in that bright yellow. Oh, and, and there goes Crafton. And, and we've got a crash. Gray around, the same for Sanchez. Stuart Friesen in it. Ty Dillon in the oh, 25. Dillon into the outside wall in hard contact with that Moffitt. Raja. Six laps in, and we have our first caution of the night. As so you see, Matt Mills right there, he barely avoided that. He had dropped to the back, and he barely avoided that. Lots of damage to Moffitt's truck. How big is this, though, for Matt Mills? You stay out of the mess. And you can come down, maybe make some repairs. And all these other drivers now having trouble. And one of them we saw there in the shot, the nine of Grant Infinger. It looked like early on, you talked, Phil, Crafton was wanting to go to the outside. It looked like he thought about going to the outside and then turned down. And I think maybe could have possibly caused some contact there. Lawless Allen, right front flat. Thad Moffat done for the night. That's so, you, we talk about Daytona and how special it is and how much you look forward to it, how anxious you are, and then just six laps in, have it all come to an end. We know how much Ty Dillon was looking forward to this race and this year to go out and win a championship in a truck. His night's over. There's a 27 truck of Keith McGee with a lot of damage. Jake Garcia, first Man. real opportunity to compete in the draft. He's got heavy damage. Now Ty Dillon is giving it up. He's climbing from his truck. What do you think, Bill? Ten trucks or so involved in this? Certainly ten involved. Some of them will be able to continue, but we're going to lose a few just, just like this 25 Rackley truck of Ty Dillon. Yeah, I think Matt Crafton can continue he, sort of at the beginning of it. Not saying it was his fault, but he was at the beginning of what happened. Oh, Tanner, sorry. I mean, the 19 just shoved me. Yeah, it's like he got hold of me, just got me swarmed from back and forth and just kept shoving me. He's talking about the 19 of Christian Eckes. Kind of kind of bumping him from behind and getting his truck out of shape. I just want to tell you, this, this pushing, this bumping game is very, very difficult to manage. This is what Matt Crafton was talking about, as you see Eckes in the blue Napa truck right behind Crafton. Just turned him a little bit sideways. Lane Riggs, look at that job he's doing. Yeah, then he then he got into the 15. Crafton got into the 15 of Tanner Gray. 
There's Ty Dillon getting into the outside wall. The red and white. I mean, red and uh, white and blue truck. Excuse me. You see, Crafton was about a half truck link up high on the back of Tanner Gray. Tough break for Stuart Friesen there at the 52 Halmar truck. Wow. Look at that dirt. This would be a great shot of it here. Right there. He, he hit Lane Riggs hard. Watch Lane Riggs, that yellow truck, avoid the 15 of Tanner Gray. Just slipped right through there, didn't he? Great job. Looks like is that Taylor Gray, maybe Corey Heim avoiding Ty Dillon. And did you see all the dirt that Grant Enfinger kicked up in the infield? Hopefully he can get that truck repaired. Raja, the 71, also getting some damage. Remember our buddy Ben Rhodes going to the back of the pack? He was making some ground. Let's ride with him and see what it looked like from his viewpoint. Wow. And we saw him right behind Jake Garcia, and we saw all the damage on his truck. 12 trucks involved. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good at Daytona, right? Well, I think that was a combination of both because yep. Ben Rhodes kept his truck pointed in the right direction, used a little bit of gas, used a little bit of brake, and then eventually saw the clear. We made it six laps, and we get a caution. 12 trucks involved. More from Daytona after you watch this. For the seventh time in the last nine races here at Daytona, we have a caution in the first six laps. Twelve trucks involved, many coming down pit road, Regan. Adam Corey LaJoy pits from the top five just now. Strictly a strategy play. They wanted to top the truck off with fuel, pack it as full as they could so they can go a little bit later into the run here. So damage trucks coming down to do damage repair, but some of these drivers electing to play a little strategy under caution early. I, I like the strategy. You talked at the very top of the show. Strategy could come into play. Now these drivers and teams have enough fuel to get to the end of the second stage at lap 40. And we talked about Rich Lucius as the crew chief of Ben Rhodes. We talked about his playbook, and he just pulled a play out of it. He did what Adam mentioned. He came down and got that gas and raced to the end of the second stage stay out at the end of this stage and get that track position. Amanda? I was talking to Joe Shearer earlier on what their strategy would be here in stage one. If they saw a caution, he said, hey, we're going to stay out and see how far we can push this thing. He said that they would then consider coming in uh, from fuel throughout the stages, but wants to make sure that they get these stage points early, depending on what's going to happen in this race. And Ty just simply looked at me and said, yeah, whatever Joe says. <laughs> That's what makes stage racing so fun. You want to say, I'm going to pit and get to the end of stage two. Oh, wait, I won't get any points in stage one. What do I do about that? <laughs> <laughs> There's always that, that, that sacrifice you have to make. But the way Ben Rhodes was moving early in this race, he could get up in the top ten before this is over. Yeah, and Corey, Joey, Corey LaJoy is one of those guys that doesn't worry about points. He can't, He's not even eligible to receive points. Here's a list of those drivers involved in the accident. You see Lane Riggs making his Daytona debut. Beat up pretty good, started 21st, but not that's, so bad that he can't continue, so that's no. good news. They, uh, he can run second for sure with that truck. <laughs> <laughs> he just needs somebody in front of him, and it's going to be fine. A couple of more laps before we return to the green flag, so we'll take a break. Johnny Sauter, your race leader early at Daytona. When I think Daytona, I think fireworks. And we've had some early on track, 12 trucks involved, bringing out a caution. That happened at lap six. Can't steal this man's spirit. He's ready to go. <laughs> He's bounding down. You said what it feels like to come here, Michael. I, I think he was acting out your feelings there. You that know? was a great video of it. <laughs> That's how we all feel inside. Let's go. Danny died. Nice job on the start of this race. Interesting. Let's go down to Amanda. 
Ty Dillon is clear from the care center said it was complete chaos out there but he was working to get that truck up to the front as fast as possible walk us through and I know you haven't seen a replay yet but your experience in it that was the wildest couple laps I've ran uh, everybody just kind of all over the place not really having a plan and our plan was to try to get our Rackley roofing 50th anniversary Silverado to the front and it was just so crazy I, I don't really know who started it there I saw the the 88 start turning so I checked up and thought I was gonna be good enough when I hit the grass right here it, it just spun the rear tires and thought I saved it coming across and where we just had mild damage and then um, yeah you're just yeah that is, it's, it's hard to dodge it all but uh, it's just crazy you know I think these races are so short you got to really get after it pretty quick I was trying to get us up front so uh, it's unfortunate we got taken out but just a small hiccup to start of the year Good that Johnny's out of the Advent Healthcare Center. Restart, Johnny Sauter outside lane, and we got 13, eight laps to go now on the stage. Yeah, that was interesting. Johnny went high, and then the first three trucks on the bottom all went low. So just some differing strategy there. Look at them stack up. That's what's so difficult. Your four or five trucks backfield, you don't know they're stacking up. Next thing you know, oh, there's a big move. And these trucks push such a big hole in the air. They their closing rate is amazing. By the way, that was Ty Dillon that came from the care center. Johnny Sauter leading this race. That was Corey Roper that the zero four truck that pulled to the outside to make it three wide. Nobody went with him. I don't know if he bailed or not, but that's exactly what happened. I mean, he didn't make a if that was a calculated move to try to go forward. It wasn't a good one. Bailey Curry right on the back of his teammate Johnny Sauter. Maybe Johnny said, I'll go high and maybe those guys will go low and I'll get Bailey behind me. We saw the bottom prevail earlier, but look at Majeski off the bottom again. Watch that 98 truck. I think he might have his hands full. Hey, those knees trucks, though, have worked well together. We saw Matt Mills giving the shove early. Here it's Bailey Curry helping out Johnny Sauter. Well, he turned him sideways a yeah, little bit, it looked like. Maybe too aggressive. A little huh? bit too aggressive, a little bit too much of a push. That's the thing you have to guard against. Sometimes these front bumpers don't line up exactly with the rear bumpers. And we've seen a lot of pushes go really bad. And when you can see things start to go bad is when they wander up off the bottom, exiting the corner, because then they got the wheel in it. Cut to the bottom. Next thing you know, the back end comes out. Look at what Daniel sees ahead of him. Bumper tight ahead there. He cannot see the leader. He cannot see the truck ahead of Tyler Ankrum. And look at the dancing around again for the 98. They're all dancing around, it looks like. I'm telling you, this makes me crazy. Look how tight Johnny is on Ankrum's door, side drafting. If you want to know hard on him. why the spotter plays such a big role at Daytona, just watch this. You do get kind of linked up with somebody, just be careful about the lock and bumper steal. But if you're there just for a sec, just release them getting into the corner. Oh. I know those cup drivers down there and Xfinity drivers are in their campers or hotels watching these guys dance around and said, man, this is a wild race. Five to go, stage one. You sure it's just five to go in the first stage? Walk it, look at that, there, there you go. Ugh. Keep your eye on 98, he's got his hands full. My ex Ooh, up the middle. Decided better of it. Caution's out. Lawless Allen with a problem in the 33. Yeah, Lawless had some damage from that first incident we Fire had. back up. I'm rolling. Looks like the right rear, rear tire. tire. Yeah. More than probably a tire rub after the damage he had. That'll probably do it for this stage, I would I would think. Lane Riggs back to pit road for more repairs on that right front fender. He's now two laps down and all his chances of winning are gone. There goes the right rear tire. Yeah. On the 33 truck. He just spins around. Let's see if he See some debris coming off that truck. Looked maybe the splitter apparatus off the front of that truck. 
Matt Mills slips by on the bottom. And, and he had some pretty serious issues there. That's the Keith 27. McGee. Keith McGee. He was involved in that first incident as well. Came down to race from Alaska. Did Keith McGee. Anytime you have damage, uh, you're going to have flat tires after that. You see the splitter is completely gone off a of lawless Allen's truck. Coming to. Lap 17. If we do go back racing, it's just going to be one lap. Yep. And that'll be a wild one, I would think. <laughs> and we're hearing from NASCAR. They want to get this thing restarted before the end of the stages. Lane Riggs goes behind the wall, Amanda. Yeah, Adam, you hate to see it. The Bahama native is going back to the garage. His team was telling him that they apologize and that they're sorry. And Lane just said, dang, you can do everything right, and this is how it happens. I know he's frustrated and uh, disappointed, but uh, we're going to see a lot more of Lane Riggs this year. A lot of people using some strategy again, Phil. There's Daniel Dye coming to pit road. Getting his fuel now to giving up stage points. You got to make that decision. Like I said, it's a balancing act. He will obviously stay out and Stefan Parsons. Stefan's not running all the races, so he can use a whole playbook. And he doesn't care about stage points. Cody in that same situation. Yeah, Cody Robo look, looking under the right rear. I think maybe checking the shock and make, make sure they don't have an issue with the shock. Wonder if he doesn't like the way it's driving or something, maybe. You saw you saw the rear tire changer kind of wobbling the tire to make sure it didn't have too much play in it. Like there was a hub issue or something like that. And this is a solid rear axle on these trucks, much like the Xfinity cars. The cup cars have independent rear suspension. Cup break for Lane Riggs. Amanda. Lane, we saw how you got out of the truck. I know this is an emotional moment for you. Before we kicked off, you said that you were in awe. How do you describe it now? I just want to go race. I want to get out there on the track and race and learn. And man, that really, really stings. You know, we had a stupid fast truck. It was coming to the front so fast and it's handling so good. And I guess they were pushing on the outside lane like it was the last lap already. I mean, I'm not a super speedway expert by any means, but I know that was a little too early. So really hate it for these guys. Thank you to Love Travel Stop for getting me here to the racetrack. Uh, I just want to rebound. I want to come back. This is not how this year is going to go. Thank you, Lane. Well, we saw yesterday how much it meant for him to be here. And this is how much it means how disappointed he is for what happened there. Very aggressive racing, but that's if you watch a replay from last year, the year before, the year before that, that's what you're going to get <laughs> every year. <laughs> yes, sir. And again, in the first stage, in the first 20 laps of the race, Tanner Gray got the free pass and is going to go around and line up at the back of the field. And as you see here, folks, choosing so we're going to go back green for one lap of racing 29 trucks on the lead lap which is hard to believe when you consider we had 12 trucks involved in that incident at lap six and we lost four trucks four trucks are listed as out of the race tomorrow on fs1 the future stars are back with roaring engines and grueling non-stop action c who claims the first checkered flag of the season? It's NASCAR's Xfinity Series, 5 Eastern time on FS1. And guys, if I was one of those drivers that decided to use some strategy, I would stay well back of this field on this restart. Well, that's the direction they're going to get from their spotter and their crew chief. We're play we've played our hand here, and part of playing our hand means we're going to lay back and not get in this mess if something was to break out on this one lap sprint. See Ben Rhodes, we know where he started. And he's been to pit road, got gas, and he's all the way up to 12th position. So he's probably thinking stage points, wouldn't you guess, Absolutely. Phil? Absolutely, yeah. Whole different scenario for somebody like that that has a chance to get some stage points. There's gonna be a handful of drivers that started outside the top 20 that no doubt are gonna get some stage points here. The give and take and strategy and accidents at a place 
like Daytona can really shake it up in a hurry. And, and you may say, why are we talking about stage points first race of the year? You come, you come race, race 16 with seven to go, they're going to become extremely important. Just if you're missing one point, it might be the difference between making the playoffs and not. And Ty Majeski doesn't just want stage points. He wants a playoff point because he feels like he can win the championship later this year. And winning this stage would put a playoff point in his bucket. Final lap opening stage. Sauter Majeski on the front row. Both lanes are really organized from the first to the second trucks in line. Tyler Ankrum in that orange truck is really beating the back of that 98 truck and we know how unstable it's been on exit of the corner. He's able to pin it down pretty good there. Look at Johnny Sauter. Three wide. Oh, their debris is flying. Sauter down on the inside lane getting pushed by his teammate Bailey Curry. Majeski back to third. Ankrum through and fourth. At 17, the orange and black truck is Taylor Gray. See Eckes leading the outside line, that blue Napa truck. Back to the line. To end stage one, Majeski out of line, but it's going to be Johnny Sauter who takes it. That's his fifth stage win at Daytona, the most all time. Wow. Okay, breathe now, Phil. <laughs> We, we get a break. I lost a few breaths on, on the back stretch there. <laughs> oh, man. This is crazy. Stage one complete. Sauter, Majeski, Curry, Ankrum, Taylor Gray, the top five. Craftsman is offering race fans different deals throughout the season. Look out for the Craftsman QR code later in the race to take advantage of tonight's Daytona deal of the race. The deal of the race. Here's the deal on the points from stage one. <laughs> Johnny Sauter collected 10. Bailey Curry with another nice job. We talked yesterday during practice. I think this is a win waiting to happen. How about Brett Holmes, five points. Jack Wood, four points. What about Corey Heim? He's been to pit road and got a stage point. We and talked we'll, about that being possible. And we'll stay out here, we're yes, quite sir. sure. There are three drivers that finished inside the top 10 got stage points that started the evening outside the top 20. And, and as you mentioned, some of those drivers have already been to pit road. And if I'm if I'm running 25th, watching all those trucks up ahead, Bob and weave around, like how do you go through all that? I mean, you, you just I know I'm old, but it makes me want to lay back <laughs> and see what happens. That's why we don't do this anymore, Phil. Yeah, we had one wreck, but we had a lot more wrecks that just didn't happen. That's exactly right. And they're gonna. You can't race like this and, and not wreck. Pit road will be open this time. We're going to see a mixed bag of strategies here, too. Here and maybe the front runner is going to pit. Johnny Sauter is going to get a splash of fuel and maybe Majeski stays out, stays out and is going to try to run to the end of the second stage or maybe try to catch another caution prior to the end of the second stage. And these teammates coming down. Majeski stays out. So does Tyler Ankrum. Great. Taylor Gray, Brett Holmes coming down as well, Amanda. You look at him pulling to his pit box. He's going to take gas only here. If you would, he was talking about the splitter a little bit, but I think that they're going to assess that later on. Regan. Johnny Sauter just a splash of fuels all they needed. He said the handling on that truck is great. No changes for him and the 41 of Bailey Curry Curry just a little bit tight off of the corners fuel only for him as well. Interesting we've had three trucks stay out that have not been the pit road yet along with Majeski Ankrum and Eckes. Let's give Johnny Sauter a shout out. See what he thinks about that truck. Hey, Johnny Sauter, Michael Waltrip, and the Fox team. Do you copy? Hello. Hello, Johnny Sauter. Hey, Johnny Sauter, it's the Fox team. You copy? Huh. Well, let's go to break. That didn't work. Maybe we'll ring him later. I'll give him a call. If he, if he wins stage two, huh? Stage two comes your way next. 
Lining up for the start of our second stage at Daytona. It's race one for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. We're at Daytona International Speedway with Michael Waltrip, Phil Parsons. I'm Adam Alexander. Ty Majeski staying out. You know, and I thought he would want a chassis adjustment. That thing looked like it wasn't handling wet, but that tells you how important that track position is. We talked about before qualifying how you want to control the race, and he's in a position to do that, and he doesn't want to give it up. Top three trucks yet to pit. We talked to, to the teams as well, and they said 34 was a limit on fuel, but we've had so many caution laps, they feel confident that they can stretch it out. Yeah, and remember, we had three pace laps as well as a bit of a warm-up on pit road in addition to those 20 laps. But again, you see Joe Shear. There's three crew chiefs right now that think they can make it to lap 40. Joe Shear's a bit of a gambler, isn't he? Totally. Matt Crafton has had an interesting go at it so far. Still in the top 10, was in that big crash. That's that bright yellow truck you see, fifth in line on the inside. Daniel Dye, the 43 red and white truck right behind him. Tony Breidinger in the one, doing some impressive stuff early. Lining up six for the restart. My, my biggest concern is that if we lead everybody here, how much fuel we're going to use. That's my concern, too. Well, you made your bed. You're going to have to lay in it because it's kind of hard to hide. What about this guy? He just got the free pass, and the team has been working hard on that truck, and it looks like it's in decent shape. Stuart Friesen, a dirt racer from Canada, raced over at New or Volusia County Speedway last night and his dirt modified. He's raced stuff has been up as that in one races, I bet. <laughs> Duke crew chief on board this year, Jimmy Villeneuve. He's probably pretty comfortable with what he's got going on. <laughs> he asked Jimmy, how's it look? Jimmy said, it looks great, Stuart. <laughs> but we've seen it over the years at this place. Never give up. Because That's right. You, you never know when the big one's going to happen. You're going to get cautious, you, cautions. You can get laps back. So you just stay in the game to the very end. And you got a shot at Daytona. Majeski goes outside, Ankrum inside. Row two, going to be Eckes and Heim. Row three, Rhodes and Breidinger. Tony with it. Row three, outside restart here. We'll see what she's able to do. This has got to have her eyes wide open, doesn't it, Phil? Yeah, that's her teammate, the 11 of Corey Heim, right in front of her. Ben Rhodes started in the back, all the way up in the top five. Pace truck is in. It's go time, second stage. Big push on the bottom. Look at Sand. Is Grant that Grant Apinger jumps to the outside of Tony Bringer. He was involved in the crash at lap six, and here he is in the nine making a play. That didn't work, so he bails, gets back to the middle. Had to get back in line to get some draft. There's his old teammate, Raja Karuth, now driving for Spire in the 71, giving a push to that nine. But we saw the 42 of Matt Mills bent up. Early in the race, falling back. Look at him go now. Wow. There's Majeski. He falls back. Tyler Ankrum grabs the lead on the restart. That's Eckes in second. How about Corey Roper, the 04 truck? He's got a top five finish here before. Ooh, he moved up the racetrack. These guys up front are happy. Got them strung out single file for now. See how long that lasts. See if Corey Heim can get a little momentum on the high side with that 11 truck. Pushing that outside lane from Ty Majeski. Looks like a strong run up there. Here comes Sanchez to join it. He looked in the mirror and saw how strong they were coming. Decided he wanted to be a part of that party. And his, a big wiggle. Yeah, and the spotter said there's momentum on the high side. He jumped up there. Oh! A little bit sideways there, wasn't he? They all are to me. Daniel Dye, solid start to the night. Tucked in that inside lane. Red and white truck behind Matt Crafton. Sanchez looks like he's got some good speed up there. Especially with that push from the behind that Heim's been able to give him. Seems staying really close to that yellow truck of Crafton. Trying to pull that truck back a little bit. And it worked too, Phil. You saw that gap wide. And now Crafton's got a push from Daniel Dye. Looks like Corey LaJoy's thinking high. 
He wants to be a part of that party on the outside. So just give me a little help. Give me a little push, Nick Sanchez. A couple of Chevrolets working together outside. Oh, lane. that's what I'm talking about. You saw Daniel lose the nose there. Man, Eckes had to hang on to it in the inside lane. Ben Rhodes giving him a shove. That was a huge moment for Daniel Dye. That's how easy it goes away from you. He looked like he was steady and solid right on the old line. Lost the nose and almost caused a crash. Ben Rhodes from the back to the front inside the top five jumps to that outside lane. He's getting a push now from Corey LaJoy. Watch this moment for Daniel Dye. See him drifting up off the bottom, drifting up, drifting up. Then finally has to turn the wheel left and sideways he gets. That's a big save. See what happens with his foot here. Briefly off the gas <laughs> and right back to the mat. If he doesn't get back in the gas, he's going to get run over from behind. Look at this outside line. Who's coming? To, who's leading it? Can we go from last to first? I think we can. It's about <laughs> to happen. Ben Rhodes drops to the rear. No problem. He said, you can call me two time. And here he is looking for the lead at Daytona. Middle stages of stage two. We were talking to Rich Lucas yesterday. He said, I have the best drafter in the field in my truck. And that's Ben Rhodes. And he's got the second best drafter, in my opinion, in the field. Corey LaJoy right on his tailgate. So important. If, if, ooh. Ankrum gets a little bit sideways up off the corner. These trucks are a handful. They are that. Seven still with you. I'd like to bring the seven with us. Seven still tied on you. That's Frank Denny out. Jr. Caution's out. Caution's out. Oh, good. I can breathe. Fourth caution of the night. And there's the reason why. Debris in turn three. Somebody's carcass of a tire is over there. I believe it's Stuart Friesen. Stuart came to pit road, the right rear flat. Can he get that tire changed? We're going to have to figure out what caused it as well. They're going to put four on it. Nine to go, stage two. Caution is out. Tyler Ankrum is your leader at Daytona. Great to have you with us live from Daytona. It's the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on FS1. Fourth caution of the night. Produces some takers on pit road. Strategy, strategy, strategy. Why would you pit here, Phil? I like pitting here, putting tires on, if that's what you want to do. And then I would come into the end of the stage just for a little splash of fuel. Then you beat everybody that puts tires on it. Most of the people told me in the garage that they wanted to put four tires on at the end of the second stage. And that opened up the strategy for them in the third stage and final stage. And now if you do it now, you just ride. You know, you don't heat up your tires that much. You, you, and then you come and get that splash of gas so that you can be on the same page as the other trucks that have gas so you don't have to short fit but all that is tempered by what do I, when's the caution going to fly oh gosh and the way it looks out there it's going to fly often Regan Adam Tyler Ankrum up front leading this race right now a fun conversation though back and forth with his team about what his truck's doing really free and it's just that front down force when you're leading like that it looks like it'll go though huh? it leads pretty damn good I mean, I think you can pull out do what you want but just keep it under here go with the stage i gotta say i love how the crew chief explained to him exactly why it was getting freer up front there to give him an understanding of that they did follow it up with they will make an adjustment when they make their pit stop to help him out just a little bit <laughs> just keep it under you and go with the stage <laughs> yeah okay thanks that's a great plan I hope I can do just that for you, <laughs> for you guys. But man, that thing is very loose. Ankrum making his fifth start at Daytona in the truck series. He's led laps every time. Wow. He's a cowboy. The cattle. He's got a bit of a, a bucking bronc out there tonight at times <laughs> in the draft, right? The cattle farmer from California, living in Statesville, North Carolina, running a cattle farm. We know we're going to run at least one more lap. Six to go now. So if they get the one to go next time, then they'll have four laps to decide this stage. Matt 
Matt Mills. We saw the problems early with that truck. And they had a penalty for improper driver assist. So he will have to come from the tail on the restart. Oh, uh, describe what that means. I, well, I, I, I've given all I know. <laughs> Maybe we could go next door and get some help from our friends at NASCAR. Improper driver assist. They just give me short sentences, you know? Hmm. <laughs> Now, see, I looked at you when I said that, and I was waiting for you to jump in and give us more. I'll tell you what let's do, Adam. Let's go to break, and I'm going to get my rule book out and tell you exactly what he did. And when we return inside of five laps to go, stage two. This is the make or break moment. The chance to carve your name into the history books. This is the NASCAR Xfinity Series. The biggest day in racing just got bigger as Grand Marshal Dwayne The Rock Johnson will kick off the Daytona 500. The Great American Race returns Sunday, 2.30 Eastern Time, only on Fox. Coverage begins with race day here on FS1, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Johnny Sauter came down and his team got a penalty and we've added a lap here so we're going to wait one more time around before we go green and as we await the restart we remind you aerial coverage provided by Goodyear powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory Goodyear more driven lights off on the pace vehicle had a one lap run to finish stage one. Gonna have three laps on the board as we resume here in stage two to finish things off. And I would say this is gonna be a pretty good little finish. Yes, it is. It's gonna be wild. We know that. A couple of guys up in front that are running low on fuel. If one of those things were to stumble, that could cause a heck of a mess. I would say all these caution laps, though, have gone a long way in ensuring that they can make it all the way and be fine to come back and make their pit stop. Christian Eckes inside man, am, of row two. And I am so selfish when it comes to this stuff, man. I know, I know, I know what you wanted to do, but you can't do that. Just be smart, so just be smart and be the good player here. Asking, he's saying he wants to win. Yeah, he's selfish. He wants and to he's take supposed it. to be selfish. But they're saying maybe help your teammate. See if you can push somebody along. We did media day for the Daytona 500 a couple days ago, Larry Mack and I. And he reminded Denny, next gen car, maybe your stats at the super speedways haven't been as good. Denny said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be more selfish. You have to be selfish to win in this format, right? Got a good glimpse of Charles Denike, the crew chief for Christian Eckes, four time winner last year in the truck series. And yes, you have to be selfish. Thank you for that. I thought you were just ignoring me. No, no. Actually. Oh, no, never. No, we're a team. Yeah. You we're might good. be selfish at the end a little bit, but. A little bit of a brief shire fleet floated through the area. Just heavy mist. Hopefully that'll go away. We're still scheduled to get this restart. Lights still off the pace vehicle. Hey, real quick on Matt Mills. They had the improper driver assist. Someone came over to service the driver, also made an adjustment on the truck. That's a no-no. So that's what that penalty was, when to clean that up. So Matt didn't do anything wrong. Matt didn't do anything I wrong. I thought he was trying to assist. I just figured <laughs> out what the heck was he doing. Three to go, stage two. Front row, Ankrum and Rhodes. And if you're just joining us, Ben Rhodes started this race in the rear. Big push by Christian Eckes on the back of that 18 truck. Look at it go, too. But watch Corey LaJoy. He's going to have the same bump on the outside. Get a hold to Ben Rhodes and shove him up there. What about Matt Crafton in the bright yellow truck? He's been aggressive all night long. He's up to third. Daniel Dye hanging tough. Ty Majeski continues in the mix. Grant Infinger in the nine, a part of the equation. Wasn't he in the dirt on the back straightaway a little yes. while ago? A lot of dirt. These guys are Here comes that up. outside line. Here it comes. A little bit of momentum there. See Ben Rhodes side by side with Daniel Dye. Daniel the 43 truck and gets sideways and almost runs off the racetrack. And did you see that 99 truck look for an, look for an escape? 
Two to go, second stage. What's quarter it? off him. So quarter off him. You know, Daniel's lost the nose with you. a couple of times here. He needs to watch out. Keep it pinned to the bottom. You lose the nose a couple of times and get that loose. You mentioned some precipitation. We've got a caution for weather. A mist on the front straightaway. Fifth caution of the night. Comes out with a couple of laps to go in our second stage. Tyler Ankrum is leading and trying to win stage two for a second straight season here at Daytona. That's an interesting stat, Adam. That kid can get it done mm -hmm. on the big tracks. You know now the rule is the end of the second stage or halfway, whichever comes first, would make it an official race. And we don't need to run but just a couple laps under caution here, and we would have an official race. But well, I sure I, I kept checking the the weather and the radar all, and I never saw this coming for sure. This is going to go away. We're going to keep racing. And remember, if these trucks stay out running under caution to try to keep the track as dry as you can, those two trucks running one, two have not been the pit road yet for fuel. And the first cat that has is that bright yellow truck of Matt Crafton. He might be thinking, hmm, let it rain. Yeah, and I'd give those trucks a little bit of room if I'm Matt Crafton. It's deja vu. We fought this last year. Yes, we did. Zane Smith didn't mind. No. Well, he kind of minded. He had to win well, it twice. Yeah, he did. But, but, he, it, but he did. When, when it was all said and done, he was holding an umbrella and a trophy. <laughs> It's just a little cell. If there's a big storm, I'd say, yeah, let's chance it, but it's just a little cell. And they're already here on the Arthur race tonight at like 10, so they're fine with staying here late. Yeah, we're, we're going to stay here late tonight. Okay, that was J-Rod Prince talking to Crafton. We're going to stay late. We're going to get that Arca race in tonight. We have established we are committed to being productive and racing throughout <laughs> the evening at Daytona. Look at that door dinghy there. Got a wheel mark that says everything you need to know about Daytona. And that's your third place running truck right now. And your eighth place running truck is all dirty because he went spinning through the infield on the back straightaway. So they're going to bring him down pit road and they will take them to the turn one side of pit road. So they will cross the start finish line, completing our second stage. Tyler Ankrum, back to back years winning stage two at Daytona. It's his third career stage victory overall. Eckes, Crafton, Die Rhodes in the top five. Majeski, LaJoy up there. Infinger gets points. So does Sanchez and Corey Heim completes the top 10 in stage two. Whew. You know, they'll make sure all the trucks will cross the start finish line, which runs all the way from the outside wall to the inside pit wall. Got a pretty good view of the rain or the mist that was falling, and it's really basically gone away. It got a little bit heavy when they threw the caution, and now I don't hardly see it at all. Yeah, it's not raining hard. We've not lost the track. You could see there just barely misting now, and it was it was a little heavier. So eh, it looks that, bad from that, that angle. That looks worse, yeah. But, but keep in mind how big this track is, miles. right? And I mean, <laughs> one end might not be raining at all. The other end, totally different story. This is what we were talking about a year ago. Pesky rain showers. Frustrating. Zane with the friendly umbrella. And remember, Phil, he had that umbrella even when it wasn't raining. <laughs> he just wouldn't put it down. It's good luck charm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad you made that point, Adam, because right here at the start finish line, that mist is gone, but maybe a half mile away. That camera shot story. made a liar of us, didn't yeah. it? I mean, I was all ready to say it's out of here, and then we saw a, a view from a different portion of the track that told a totally different story. Well, Phil said it. The rules in NASCAR are you either get to halfway or the end of stage two, whichever is first to make the race official. So we have accomplished that. Stage two is complete. 
Why don't we see if we can talk to our leader in stage two winner. Hey, Tyler Ankrum, Phil Parsons, and the boys in the Fox booth. You got a copy? I got you, boys. Nice job there. Congrats on winning stage two. Uh, you, uh, are you a little low on fuel, you think? Yeah, I don't. I think our crew chief, Mark Hillman, is a little excited to be leading this thing. Got in the truck, he said it's time to let the peacock fly, and he kept me up there, been saving, saving a lot of fuel. Got a pretty nice piece for this race, so uh, if we're going to come in here and top off on fuel, get back going. Sounds good. It's been fun to watch. You guys have, uh, those trucks don't look like they're that easy to drive, though, Tyler. No, no, especially when, you know, solder's literally only giving you an inch on your door and trying to spin you out. It uh, can be a handful sometimes. Now, he's a veteran. He wouldn't be doing that on purpose, would he? No, not to the kids. Not at all. <laughs> All right, Mark, it's your turn to tell me what's going on. You told him that thing, he said it was loose, and you said hang on to it and win the stage. He did his job, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he looks good out there. He does that. You brought him a heck of a truck. Are you, are you concerned at all with the truck refiring, or do you think you're going to be good to get back to the, uh, to the pit? No, we're good. We had plenty of caution. Uh, even without all these caution laps, we were going to be good, so we're fine. I like your confidence. Done a great job. See if you can finish this baby off. Thank you. Thank you, boys. He's he's laid back, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I, I knew he was laid back when he told Tyler, just hang on to it and win the stage. I mean, no problem. I know it's a handful to drive. Just hang on to it. <laughs> Liuna, they've been a great partner for Tyler Akram, mm -hmm. and they've it's cool to see them leading up front. New team for Tyler Ankrum in 2024, but the same old result. He's leading at Daytona. We're under the red flag. Our Charlotte studios have coverage for you when we come back. Welcome back to coverage of the Craftsman Truck Series season opener out there at Daytona International Speedway. We're paused for some weather. Pop-up shower happening, but we are confident we'll get going momentarily. You see the trucks there parked for now, <laughs> but hopefully not for long. Welcome in, though, to our race day studio. Uh, Caitlin Vinci alongside Trevor Bain, Todd Bodine. Once again, two stages complete, one to go in the race. And guys, as we have grown accustomed to seeing out in Daytona, it was very interesting interesting right from the start. We had a big accident yeah. right, barely as we got going in this race. So I want to show footage of that wreck because I want you guys to walk me through everything that you were seeing here because this one was pretty surprising to see something like this happen this early, right? Yeah, a lot of drivers said, hey, we want to log laps and learn. Well, it was only lap seven before <laughs> they learned pushing this aggressive this early was a bad idea. You see multiple trucks that are locked together. What happens, Caitlin, is when you're already on the, the back bumper of the guy in front of you and you get hit from behind there's nowhere to go it moves the truck side to side laterally and that hooks the truck in front of you you see matt crafting kind of wiggle and then eventually it catches stuart friesen who spins in front of the field luckily keeps all four tires on the ground yeah i, I have a problem with this i i gotta uh, voice my opinion you're mad, Todd. i, he I was am pretty very upset, upset because every one of these young guys i talk to i tell them don't bump draft you don't need to do it. Not lap seven, Not, right? Well, period. Where, where's he going? <laughs> He's in the middle of the pack. Where is he going? Right. Nowhere. Nowhere. Don't be bum drafting. You don't need to do it. If you're first and second line trying to push past, yeah, that's what you do. But not in the middle of the pack, especially not on the seventh lap. Guys, watch these races. Figure it out. Man, it aggravates me. <laughs> we can tell. Do you think this is a product of just people inexperienced at this style of racing, or is it just the feeling that you need to be aggressive very early? Well, not just at this type of racing, but maybe even at this level, right? Okay. Some of these drivers are coming out to the truck series for their first or second season, and they're excited. You've been on the couch for the off season, Like, this is your chance to go win a, a truck series race. And so they get excited. It's early in the race, and you start losing perspective. You're battling somebody beside you, and you start pushing. The the crazy thing is, though, Caitlin, where it started was with some of our most experienced. Exactly. Christian Eckes, Matt Crafton. Those guys, you know, were hooked on. And, and I talked to some guys this week, and when we were at, they were asking advice, I said, leave a gap in front of you. You yeah. can't control what happens behind you. You can't control if the guy runs into you. But you can sure control what's out front of you. And if you're already on their bumper and you get hit from behind, you, what's left but getting spit out? You know, somebody's going to go somewhere, and that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Were you surprised but, to see that so early? Oh, absolutely. I, 
I thought, you know, seventh lap, you know, you're, you're, you're in line, you're figuring out what's going on, you figure out what kind of truck you got, who's doing what. It, there's no hurry. There's no hurry in these races. And, and I, I think that you're exactly right, Caitlin. There, there is a sense of urgency. These kids feel like, I got to go, I got to get to the front, I got to race hard. And that's not how you do it. It's the, just the not how you do it. The bad thing is all the innocent bystanders. We saw Ty Dillon get out of a truck where he's excited for a season. We saw other drivers that had nothing to do with the initial part of this crash, and that's Daytona. Sometimes you're along for the ride, exactly. even if you don't initiate it. Certainly not how a lot of these drivers had hoped maybe their race would start yeah. out at Daytona. Two stages complete, one more to go. So now we're going to once again join the guys calling the action. Say hello again to Adam Alexander. Thank you so much, Caitlin. And it's great to be back at Daytona. Great to see the trucks rolling. The red flag has been lifted. We've returned to the caution. This is not the side I was hoping to see for Daniel Dye. We saw him. Uh, his truck failed to start for qualifying. He was able to be pushed off and it ended up with a top 10 run, but it will not start. You see the truck pulling up there and this will not penalize him. No, he gets a free push. Yeah, and he'll get be able started. to pull right back up into a spot. He was running fourth and finished fourth in the stage. There it fires off right there. So he's good. To, he says thank you. He's good to go. I would say thank you too. Yes, it beats the alternative. Yes. <laughs> What a great looking truck though for Daniel Dye. Yeah, what a great start to this race. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed by Matt Crafton too, the veteran. He's seeing all these trucks bouncing and sliding. Heck, he's even been run into and bounced off of other trucks, but he's he's really committed to try to get his truck to the front. Really doing a nice job. Got a little bit of a wound, but no harm, no foul. I mean, Crapton's a little beat up. You got Ben Rhodes up there who started in the back. Grant Infinger was involved in that crash at lap six. All these drivers picking up stage points in stage number two. Last year, there were 20 drivers that were involved in incidents. But that doesn't mean 20 different trucks. Some of them more than once, just like <laughs> we're talking about now. These guys have been involved in an incident, but yet still up here contending for the lead. Talking about stage points, here's the breakdown. Ankrum leads the way with 17. Majeski's had a good night after starting on the pole. Solid for Eckes, who qualified outside the top 20. Scott Howard is there. Got to remember how important each of those stage points are. Be the difference between making the playoffs and not. So we open up pit road. We'll see how the various strategies are built on here. These drivers have been doing a lot of different things so far in this race. And yeah, you got to watch for contact too, Adam, when you have all these different strategies. Guys pulling into their pits, others pulling out. Let's see how it unfolds. Amanda? Adam, I'd make an argument. Another guy that's had a great night is Ben Rose. He started from the rear. He came in. He ended up. Uh, you look at Ty Majeski there on the right hand side. Going to be four tires for that team and some fuel on the left hand side the 88 of matt craft and he wanted to make a little bit of adjustment in that truck he asked for a wedge adjustment the team said he could not make that happen but did have the track bar adjustment also some air pressure for some issues with the splitter regan tyler and from finally getting the adjustments for the loose truck that he wants they took four tires and made those adjustments in the 19 of christian eckes no complaints he's just ready to go still race off pit road is big here because you take control of this race for the final stage. I don't know if I want control, Adam. Yeah, maybe you don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's been wild up there on that front row. Trucks on the bottom sliding up into the ones on the outside. But it's been entertaining, I'll tell you that. I talked about coming and going. Watch this gaggle with the 76 of Spencer Boyd trying to get in his pits twice. Corey Heim, whoa. Okay, I'll do it now. Nope. What a heads up move though by Spencer that's, Boyd to stop. That's what you do right there. You, I mean, he, he also had time to stop. That got pretty snug. Yes, very tight on pit road. Hot dog, that was fun. <laughs> well said. <laughs> We're ready for the final stage here at the World Center of Racing. We'll reset things and put the green flag in the air one more time after a break on FS1.
NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Opening up 2024 at Daytona International Speedway. And if the second half of this race is anything like the first, we're in for a real treat because it's been entertaining to say the least. A little bit of everything so far. Looks like a, some work on the roof flaps. Maybe. Or the antenna, maybe the radio antenna. Yeah, maybe that's it. Yes, that is what yeah. they were doing. Must have had a radio communication issue. issue. You certainly want to be able to hear your spotter here. <laughs> what about the truck uh, running third on the inside lane there? Stuart Priest and I talk about the Northeast Modified Racer, Dirt Modified. His truck's all dinged up. And he's in the top five, getting ready to restart this race. He's one of the four trucks running up front right now that did not pit at the end of the stage. Oh, Ty Majeski had a penalty over the wall too soon. You can see that right there. Then he left, but he started over the wall. You can't do yeah, that. Yeah, his foot was on on pit road. You, we only, haven't, you only get you only get one pit box. I think there were two crew members that yeah. were over the wall too. We have a officiating crew that studies all the data that happens on pit road and then makes those calls. So and there's no hiding from that video for sure. Majeski starts on the pole, got a ton of stage points, which, which helps should he have some kind of an issue here restarting 19th because he could very well be in the middle of the mess as we hit this final stage. I think when you're on the front row, you're in the middle of the mess. Yeah, you are. Holmes and Sauter take the green flag from that front row. Nice start by Holmes. Good push from Tanner Gray. Now Holmes will bail and get to the bottom. Mike Shiplett, crew chief, coming on board Brett Holmes' team this year, former winner in the Xfinity Series, as well as the Cup Series with Cole Custer. Look at Friesen. I talked about his truck. Now he's going to have his hands full because he needs to handle a bit. He needs some downforce. We'll see if he can hang on to it. Tanner if anybody Gray can, it's him. He was involved in that incident early. Here he comes in the outside lane. A little shove from Chase Purdy. Corey Heim is right there. Tanner Gray can choose which lane he wants to go in right now. He's going to stay high to try to keep these trucks side by side. But Brett Holmes is fighting back on the inside. A little momentum there on the outside. Tanner doesn't want to get too far out in front. You can see the damage on the left front of his truck. And here comes Holmes. Oh, he's going to go up high. Hangs on to it. Tanner Gray, no stranger to success at Daytona. Top five here the last two years, including a runner up a season ago. Fifth different driver to lead tonight. How about Johnny Sauter, that 45 white truck second spot with a nice push to Brent Holmes to put him out front. Bailey Curry, the 41, lining up. And there's Stuart Friesen with all the tape flapping and <laughs> body work flapping. Christian Eck is jumping to the inside. Oh, no, don't try to shut the hole. That was Tanner Gray, the 15, got shoved out of line, looked to come back down, not clear, and he's going to go in the wrong direction. Caution is out. Sixth of the night. That's the 27. That's Keith McGee. Keith had been in an accident earlier. Looks like a single truck incident. Fortunately. See Keith moving around in the truck, getting the net down. We got to come fix this, Phil. Yeah, that's a little bit too much, I think. Or do we? He's running still forth. running fourth. Yeah, he hasn't lost any ground. Safety team there to check on Keith. Already made contact. It looks like uh, with a wall. He's going to end up in the grass and the trioval. Wow, that's a hard hit, Phil. Yeah, and so many times, and we saw it, we saw it earlier. When you have some damage from a previous wreck, you're going to get tire rubs and flat tires. I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure that was the case for Keith. And you're going to get some flapping. Yes. Look at the way the front ends caved in there too. It's amazing he's able to keep it up in that front pack. A couple of laps shy of the halfway point. We'll come back after a moment on FS1. Tomorrow on Fox Primetime Hoops, it's another chapter in a big rivalry as Tyson Walker leads Michigan State in a showdown against Michigan. It all tips off 8 Eastern time, 5 Pacific on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Go Blue! Well, if you're from Michigan, Phil, who do you root for, Michigan or Michigan State here? I didn't go to either school. I went to Oakland University, so okay. I, I can go either way. All right, we got basketball coming up after our truck race tonight, Mountain West action as New Mexico takes on San Diego State. And because rain is expected here in the Daytona area tomorrow, they've moved the ARCA race from tomorrow to tonight. Coverage starts 1030 Eastern time on FS2. And then as soon as we finish basketball, New Mexico and San Diego State, we will resume coverage of racing here at Daytona with the conclusion of that ARCA race. And you can watch it all on the Fox Sports app. We have a lot of racing left to do here in this truck race. Yes. First things first, right? Yeah. Just about to halfway in this race. It's been a wild one. I know we've had a lot of cautions, but we've also had a lot of opportunities for more cautions, and these drivers have been able to hold onto their truck somehow. Like to see it get into a rhythm, run some laps here, see who can take control of this race. These my drivers have elected to top off with fuel. MJ. He's taken in the truck race here. Big race fan. Mm hmm. His name ain't just on the building. He's involved in the team and. Loves this sport. Some of my favorite moments are when he's on the pit lane after a race, got his arm around Bubba or Tyler and. <laughs> Debriefing with them about their race. Big win for Tyler last night. Yes. Nearly wrecked coming to pit road and made a great move late to get the victory. So tonight we open 2024 here at Daytona. Let's go over some of the highlights that you'll see on the schedule this season. No, no more dirt. We're not going to see any dirt on the schedule this season, but we will go to Bristol twice. I love Bristol. Yeah, in March and September. Getting there in March on the concrete will be a fun race. And look at Martinsville doubling up there on the concrete turns. November 1st, an elimination race to determine who's in the championship four. And we're going back to North Wilkesboro for a second straight year. With brand new pavement. And, and oh yeah, Phoenix is where we'll decide our champion again. Ben Rhodes hoping to go back to back and become three times. Coming to the one to go. Choose it up. You know, Michael, you mentioned the lack of rhythm. How challenging for a driver when you just can't get it going. Well, the frustrating thing, I think, for someone like Tyler Ankrum, you know, he's leading the race. He's in control of it. Because of all the cautions, guys that don't have that fast of trucks have been able to take some chances. We talked about the playbook, having all kinds of different options because of the stage breaks. Ankrum's now outside the top 10, and he's got his work cut out for him. We saw how bad it was handling up front. We'll see how he's going to be in traffic. Amanda? Just heard quickly there. You saw the 98 back at the pit box. They wanted to come in for a little more fuel. Yeah, not a bad plan to top off, but with 50 laps to go, we know that these trucks can go 40 laps. We saw a couple trucks do that, Ankrum and Eckes. That's with about half of those laps being run under caution. Another truck on pit road, Matt Mills, as they continue to try to repair the damage done in the first couple of laps of this race. There you see Ankrum back in the 12th position on this restart. Corey Heim in a, is in 11th in the 11 truck. He's been really fast. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him fight his way to the front. See if we can see Keith hit. Wow, something just broke something on that broke. truck. Had Greg on the right front of that truck and just turned him straight into the outside. Fortunately, safer barrier. Yeah. 
We saw Ryan Blaney have a heck of a crash last night and walk away from it. Safer barriers, in my opinion, the biggest safety implementation we've ever seen in NASCAR. NASCAR continues to work on the cars and trucks and safety's always been a moving target, but I'm really thankful to see that safer barrier there for Keith to bounce off of. Mm -hmm. We're gonna restart with 49 to go. Holmes goes in the outside lane inside Johnny Sauter. Sauter's got his teammate Bailey Curry right behind him. And Stuart Friesen elected not to come fix that left front. He's going to stay on the track and push Bailey Curry. Wow, great start by that inside run. Nice shove Johnny Sauter's getting. Here comes Stewart. He's going to give Curry a big shove. I like that 88 truck. He's got a lot of speed. Always right up there in the top five. Sauter's gotten pretty far out in front of that group. And with that, the outside lane with a rally. Jack Wood pushing Holmes. Right behind him, the 17. That's Taylor Gray. Well, it looks like a pace lap right now, doesn't it? Stewart's going to lose a little front downforce, and it looked like he went a little bit wide on exit there in that blue truck, third in line on the inside. See guys trying to take it three wide. That hasn't worked yet tonight. That outside lane has just stalled straight out. It's Corey LaJoy, that seven truck leading that. Is that Ben Rhodes behind him in the 99? Well, if it's going to work, it's getting ready to. And look at them joining joining with them. Yes, yeah, Sanchez is jumping up there. Daniel Dye, the red truck. Look at this run. Major There's momentum in the outside lane. They're stalled out on the bottom, and here comes that outside. Had worked all night long, and Corey LaJoy said, let me give it a whirl. Three wide, is it going to work? Jack Wood trying to hang on to it in the middle lane in that 91. I don't like this. This racetrack is narrow through this tribal area here. And the trucks like to dance through there. Not a lot of banking to be making a turn. They were scaring me to death too wide. Yeah, I'm like you, Michael. I don't like this. Three or four rows are three wide. Corey LaJoy bails on the outside, but look what's happening with Ben Rhodes. Sanchez pushing Rhodes in that outside lane. Is that too much of a push? NASCAR Ooh. said they're going to police that. Jack Wood jumped to the inside right in front of Stuart Friesen to go under Corey LaJoy. LaJoy now drops down to that inside lane. That was crazy, the run that LaJoy got up there. Yeah, the outside is losing trucks. Only three trucks left on the outside right now. Three rows back of us. Out front, you guys can get back working your way back up there. Dean Thompson in the five green machine, Tanner Gray in the 15. There, you see Tory Brodinger right back up in the mix. Here comes Ankrum on the inside of Stephen Parsons, Stephen on the outside with Raja behind him. Oh, look at him dance. Smarter race is Stuart Friesen running right now. Staying right on the bottom. He's lost some positions, but he knows that truck is aerodynamically challenged. Look at that. That's amazing. He will not be able to lead a line, but he's following pretty nicely. Ooh, look at that shiny right rear fill. A little bit of tire rub there. Hope that thing doesn't go flat. You can tell how much it's rubbing. Grant Infinger, the nine. Surfacing at the front behind Corey LaJoy. He's second in that outside lane. Ben Rhodes, third in that outside line. 44 laps to go. We'll take you side by side with Brett Holmes leading the way at Daytona.
This season, Toyota Racing is looking for jaw droppers. Break for Martin Truex right there, the fastest lap of the day. Iron stomachs that can stand the pressure. And quick draw thumbs that leave their own smoke trail. So hold on tight and strap yourself in. This season, we want you. Join us at Toyota Racing. Ma, are you sure you don't want to go bowling with us tonight? Yeah, no. There's my little marzipan. <laughs> oh, my daughter gives the best hugs. <laughs> We're just passing through on our way to the Jazz Jamboree. <laughs> and we wanted to thank America's number one motorcycle insurer for saving us money. <laughs> Mara, your parents are... Exactly like me. I know, right? <laughs> well, cherish your friends and loved ones. <laughs> Let's roll, daddy-o. Let's boogie-woogie. Are you ready? Because Vintage NASCAR is back. Get ready for some bumper banging fun because in 2024, the Food City 500 is back. That's right, back on concrete, back to sheet metal bending chaos, back to racing the way it ought to be. Grab a spring weekend package today and save 15%. It's the Food City 500 at Bristol Motor Speedway, March 17, 2024. It'll be St. Patrick's Day, so get ready to party. Visit BristolMotorSpeedway.com for tickets and details. Start with a bang. Invite a bunch of friends, then fill the infield like a rock concert. Mix in some superstar power and turn them loose. A 500-mile all-out fight for NASCAR's biggest prize. That's the Great American Race. The Daytona 500, Sunday at 2.30 Eastern on Fox. NASCAR fans, you are in the driver's seat. What are you waiting for? Sign up for the free NASCAR Fan Rewards Loyalty Program today at nascar.com slash fan rewards. Michael, what did you say earlier about you can be on the front row and still be in the middle of the mess, right? Yes, the yeah. front row's been as scary as the middle of the pack, and it just happened as you didn't miss a thing as we went side by side and our front trucks crashed. You could be a leader, right? Yes. And, and get in trouble. We saw the leader, Tyler Ankrum, several times sideways, and finally, a round went Brett Holmes. Look yeah. at the block that Johnny throws on Corey LaJoy. And then that gets him squeezed out. And then Holmes down on the bottom of Sauter. Is Bailey Curry gonna come up and give him a bump? That 41 truck. No, I think he just no, got loose. Just got loose, and Bailey Curry goes around as well. Bailey's going to get into the inside safer barrier. Brett Holmes keeps his truck out of the safer barrier. Just got loose up off the corner. We've, we've seen it repeatedly. And uh, maybe that run that Johnny Sauter had on the outside, he was down a little bit lower on Brett than he was used to. Just pull that rear end of that truck around. That's the hardest part of this racetrack when you're on the inside of another truck is getting off turn four. 42 to go. I think we pit, Adam. I was going to say, what are you thinking here strategy-wise? Because we like know it. we're outside the window, or at least in theory, but we've had so many cautions. Yeah, most, most everybody does just that. Because if you're counting, if you're, it trends, it's trending to be caution-filled. Let's get to pit road and get it done. Amanda? You'll see Stewart freezing in his box and aesthetically if you look at the front of that truck they want to make some adjustments there no concern yet but just afraid to you know fix what might happen later on four tires there's going to be fuel and Stewart will be back out Regan. 45 of Johnny Sauter came to pit road it was fuel only for him when he got down here the crew chief Phil Gould played it very coy said I've got a plan didn't announce his plan until right as he entered pit road. Sauter started on the front row, has led the most laps tonight, 23 out front. Yeah, they got it. They got to work on that. The whole front end's caved in on that tire, and the tire will eventually fail. We saw the right rear was shiny as well. The rub back there, they might ought to go address that as well. See, Majeski stalls this truck, truck trying to get out of his pit box. I like the strategy of stopping now, and, and we've had trucks go about 40 laps towards the end of the race in the past but remember after prior to last year when we were range shortened the previous four races all finished in overtime by the way eight trucks stayed out we'll reset the running order when we come back 
seventh caution of the night for a two truck incident coming off of turn four. Hey, Phil, why don't you go ahead and break down the strategy of this race? Because <laughs> while we were away, all those trucks that stayed out, they decided to come down pit road. Well, I can understand why they came down pit road. I just didn't understand why they didn't pit the lap <laughs> <Okay>. before that. <laughs> but now they have one more lap of fuel than the trucks that did, obviously. Yeah, and also, I mean, is it time? Some of them thinking about bailing after watching the first 60 laps of this race right in the back. I haven't seen any evidence of that. But as you can see, a lot of them aren't doubling up. So that could very well be the case. But the other thought I had is if you come a lap later, you don't come with the entire field, which minimizes your chance of getting banged up when you make that pit stop. Regan, what do you got on the nine? Michael, I can tell you the nine truck of Grant Enfinger was a truck that did not want to do what they did. They were trying to stick to a plan. Very frustrated that they didn't come down the first time pit road was open. Now he's in the back. He did not want to ride. I think they're lined up to ride. What do you think, Phil? <laughs> Grant's not. <laughs> you can't make me ride. Front row. Sanchez, the control truck outside of him, Johnny Sauter. The Corolla Joey did not get a great start. That's the green truck. Dean Thompson right behind him. Now they're catching back up. It changes in a hurry, doesn't it, Phil? You fall back to the truck behind you, and you just are shot ahead. That craft in, in the bright yellow truck up to third. Look at all these second year drivers that are up there. You got Sanchez, you got Taylor Gray, Daniel Dye, Corey Heim. Taylor's been fun to watch. Just getting better and better. New crew chief calling the shots, Jeff Hensley. I like that matchup this year. Absolutely. And his older brother Tanner, who led a lap tonight, is right back in it in the 15. Look at that left front fender on that truck. It's torn up. See Ben Rhodes continually trying to peek out. To He's up to make something happen in that third lane. He's up there. See the blue truck three wide. We saw what happened when Corey LaJoy got something going up there. Three good trucks right there in a line trying to make it work. See Ben Rhodes trying to gain a little bit of momentum. You see that's the five Dean Thompson. There's Corey LaJoy in the seven. A little bit of a bump from Dean Thompson to Corey LaJoy. See if Ben can make any ground up in the corner here. A little bit of a separation between LaJoy and Thompson for a moment. Getting some help there as you see Christian Eckes, Tyler Ankrum, Jack Wood, all trying to make it work on the outside. Meanwhile, below them, it's bobbling everywhere. I saw somebody back off the throttle. I saw fire come out the exhaust pipes. Was that Dean Thompson possibly? We still have 37 laps to go. You wouldn't know it, would you? Sure wouldn't. You can see the gap. There are some trucks that have elected to get out of this hornet's nest, and I'm with them. A nice push by Corey Joy into the back. Look at Eckes and Rhodes making up ground on that outside lane. Huge rally. Yeah, the 46 of Johnny Sauter just kind of lost a little bit of momentum, and now he's come, he's broken away from the 43 of Daniel Dye. Look at that. He's loose. You're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. debatable. Yeah. I don't like it. He was loose when he was too wide. About lost it there in the middle of that pack. Look at Jack Wood. Chase Purdy there. You got to say one thing about Daniel Dye. He ain't afraid of nothing. He's kept his foot in it, even though that thing's been out of whack. A little bit of momentum now on that high side. Tyler Ankrum leading that group. He's led 18 laps tonight as Ankrum. Look what that push from Christian Eckes did to that 99 of Ben Rhodes. Johnny Sauter squeezing down on Nick Sanchez. Gene is half off you. Maintain that. Two is with him. Maintain that. Johnny's hung in the middle without a lot of help right now. Ben Rhodes won this race 2021, went on to claim the championship. He's our reigning champ after getting it done again in 2023. Adam, where did he start? He started all the way in the back. And how many times has he been back there since then? Like four or five. Yeah, and now he's in the front again. 
What a race for Ben Rhodes. And look at the biggest movers in the pylon since that last restart. Chase Purdy is plus 15. Eck is plus 14. And we talk about Ben Rhodes up 12 spots since we returned to the green flag. Are, are we getting our rhythm, Phil? I think so. I'm, I'm glad we're we're just two too wide now, not three. And we've got the first six or eight that are single file. And that can change in one lap. If these guys could just string together 20, 30 laps, then it's going to get nuts again. Rhodes, the race leader, Amanda. Adam, you're talking about his championship in 21. He went on to be the runner-up in 22 and then again won last season. You know, they were talking a lot about dynasties last week, and I brought this word up to Ben Rhodes. He said, oh, I'm a boy from Kentucky. I don't even know what that word means. He says, I just want to show up when it's important. Rhodes tonight has led three laps, and he has the field in tow right now. Race fans, we are staying with all the action here at Daytona, commercial free with Crank It Up, sponsored by Craftsman. Grab your phone now and get ready to scan the QR code for the Craftsman deal of the race. Craftsman's back on track with deal of the race. During this year's Craftsman Truck Series, we're giving race fans rockin' deals on tools to power through projects. Because teams and fans alike trust Craftsman to get the job done right. Low profile ratchets get it done. If you've got a garage, this better be in it. Get into tight spaces fast. Scan now for the current deal of the race. From outdoor care to home and auto repair. Do it fast. Do it proud. Do it with Craftsman. Oh. We've got a whole lot going on here. Was that a was that an intense crank it up or what? Ben Rhodes on pit road, Amanda. They are cranking it up down here. They're going to take two tires on the left-hand side of the truck. Ben Rhodes, all he did was scream to his team, tire, tire, and made it dip into the pit road. And that was because of the contact we saw during Crank It Up. Big, big contact for Ben Rhodes, and it gave him a flat tire, came to pit road. He's going to lose a lap. Yeah, Tyler Rankin made hard contact. Got to believe as Daniel Dye dips off the racetrack that maybe there was a push gone bad or something like that, and that pushed... Pushed Ankrum into Ben Rhodes. How about that save by Chase Purdy? Looked like contact from behind from Christian Eckes, and somehow he hangs on to it, and now he's got Sanchez in his hip pocket. Watch this big, big contact with Ben Rhodes sideways, and then bam, Ankrum down into him after a push by Purdy. A push gone wrong. Look at that. I can't believe it didn't crash. I can't either. We were on board, and it was just like a body slam. Listen to this.
And if it wasn't for Ben Rhodes, Ankrum's crashed, but it bounced him straight. Christian Eckes now taking over the lead in that outside lane, a little push from Corey LaJoy. Chase Purdy up to third, battling tight in this race. How about Stefan Parsons into the top five for the first time today? He just been laying in the weeds. Yes, he right? has. <laughs> Driving like a true veteran. Tyler Ankrum, backside of the top ten. Clear bottom, clear bottom. Tell me what happened into three there so I know. Run was, coming, run was coming too fast. I was not going to block it. I just want to ride on the bottom. It's oh. only lap 71. Is that Rhodes again? Yeah. That's him losing his lap. Oh, he's going to crash. There goes Ben Rhodes. I don't know about that move. Caution is out. Eighth one of the night. You talked about him. He was getting lapped, and he was in the middle of all those trucks. You know, he's probably wanting to catch up, catch the draft. I don't know what happened, but, you know, a lot of times you just bail up to the high side and let everybody go under you as, as he was losing his lap. And then rely on getting a free pass yes. next time. Take your, take your penalty. And, and rely on that free pass. We'll have to get a look at what happened. It popped in the halfway in three and four. I felt it going. I tried to get up out of the way last second. I don't know what to say about that. Sounds like he agreed with us. Yeah. He should have gotten up out of the way. I don't know he why. He was trying to. I think he said he popped, so maybe he cut a tire down. That well, because of the contact, maybe the tire blew out and he was that, trying to get yes, out of the way. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, you see there, they're beating on the fender. Yeah. And it happens so often when you get a flat tire because of a tire rub and you really don't get it pulled out enough or beat out enough and you get another flat. So Ben, the veteran that he is, was trying to get out of the way and the tire, tire he says, popped. Yeah, it went. Yeah, it's it's gone now and he's doing all, all he can do. Pretty remarkable. To try to keep that. That he's uh, hanging on to it right here. And yes. eventually Look at it turn sideways and then he catches Tanner Gray in the 15 truck. Luckily, no more trucks were involved than were sure could have been. Now we ride on board with Ben Rhodes. Like Tony Breitinger had a little bit of contact as well. She got damaged. We mentioned Tanner Gray. That 15 truck has really gotten beaten up in this race. But he continues to march on. <laughs> I don't know when. Look, look, at, look at Corey Heim. Ty Majeski, both drivers that have had some problems tonight, despite the fact that they've had solid trucks and they're able to make it through this unscathed. These caution laps will help those drivers trying to make make 40 laps on this run. That was a fun run, wasn't a lot of action. And First time this. tonight we had really developed a rhythm. Yes, sir. I think that's the end yeah. of the day for Ben. They knew he was here for sure today. Yeah, and the contact from Ankrum into the side of Ben, you know, it's just tight racing in the draft, flattened a tire, and they pitted and changed tires, and then it blew out again. Ben Rose started at the back after making some adjustments to his truck post qualifying. Drove his way to the front, led five laps. 25 remaining at Daytona. Under our eighth caution, our reigning champ cut a tire and lost control. Is this the start of a dynasty, a redemption tool, a breakthrough, or is this the making of the wildest ride you'll ever witness? Any questions? 
Back at Daytona, aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Getting down to it. It's been a long night. Had a weather delay and a whole lot more going on. Let's hear from the champ, Amanda. One of the things you never want to see is the crew chief of the champ pushing the truck back to the garage. And Rich, you're, you look over what happened in this race, you guys being able to make it up to the front. Describe the disgust that you may have feeling right now. It's definitely a disappointment. I feel like we had a great F-150 uh, ranch fuel truck. And uh, we showed how fast it was by going from dead last to the front. And I thought we had a chance to win this thing. And uh, people can't hold their line on the outside lane and drove in the right side of us and then cut down the right front tire. And I guess the rest is history. What are you going to say to Ben? I'm going to tell him he did a great job, like always. And uh, just we'll go get him at Atlanta. Thank you. Ben Rhodes. The defending champ had one DNF a season ago, and he won't finish here tonight, obviously. Well, Corey LaJoy has been one of the strongest trucks all night long. He's fought his way to the front a couple of times, and here he finds himself on the inside leading the race. Coming to the green here. 23 laps to go. LaJoy inside of Sanchez. What about Chase Purdy? He ended the 2023 season so strong. And here he is fighting for a chance to win at Daytona. If Chevrolet's lined up on the inside. A couple of Chevys getting it done in the outside. Christian Eckes, huge push on Nick Sanchez. Taylor Gray comes through and dives to the inside lane. Inside line looked organized, but they uh, they didn't have any momentum when they got down to turn one. I think you can give that big push to Christian Eckes getting a hold to the back of that two truck. Nick Sanchez and catapulting him to the lead. But they're going to catch up to him. You can only get so far ahead and the draft takes over and look at Corey LaJoy. He wants to go to the outside. He's going to pick up a push from Chase Purdy who squeezes in front of Tyler Ankrum. His teammate said I'll go with you bud. Now Sanchez is going to move up in front of Eckes. Man, when you start switching lanes like Sanchez is, that's a risky game. It's all about timing. and You pull down one second, a half a second too late, and you'll find yourself spun out. And we see that all the time in the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series, but these trucks, the closing rate on these trucks is way different than those cars. Look at Stefan Parson in the ballpark truck. He's right there with Taylor Gray. Jack Wood behind him, Corey LaJoy up top. Trying to get back. It's a push, and he's going to push there him goes sideways. There around. Right. Into Parsons. Johnny Sauter gets a piece. And other drivers scattering to miss the accident. Caution number nine. Man. What a mess. Eckes, Sauter, Parsons. Right there battling for the lead. Jack has flat tires. Dean Thompson already on pit road. Johnny Sauter's hood askew. I don't know who's going to win this thing, but we continue to eliminate some really, really good contenders. Yes, and it's it's really tough to watch. Is this a push gone awry or did Christian just get loose? Looked like maybe Taylor Gray came up a bit, huh, Phil? Yeah, I think so. And maybe that caused Christian to turn to the right a bit and then then it went around. Let's see what Danny Dye sees. He's going to see a lot. Right. Really nice job by Daniel Dye. Right place at the right time, but didn't panic. Rolled out of the gas and just kept his truck pointed straight. Boy, Stefan was absolutely in the wrong place at the wrong time. A lot of damage to that 
ballpark Chevrolet. How many drivers have said that over the years racing at Daytona wrong place wrong time does a heck of a job hanging on to it after that contact. He's on pit road along with Christian Eckes Dean Thompson. Right front corner of that truck is gone. Corey LaJoy in the middle of all that. I don't think I was on him. I just think that he was in a bad air spot. Damn for yeah, the front of the 77 is just like a wedge. Yeah, I don't think he was on him either. I believe it was just that truck moved up and Christian had to move to the right a bit and then around it went. Sanchez tonight has led six going to be seven laps when he comes around this time. He leads all windless drivers in trucks in laps led over 300 and counting and he's not been able to find his way to victory lane. Sauter's led the most laps tonight. Ben Rhodes spent five circuits out front. He's with Amanda. Adam, before he headed into the care center, he said this is the worst possible thing that could happen. And when you look at the valiant effort from yourself and your team tonight, would you say this one was taken from you? I wouldn't go that far. Nothing's given at Daytona. Um, just feel embarrassed for the late race or that late, you know, move that I made to go to the top. I felt the tires start to go down at that point. I was too fast to get to the apron, so I thought I could go to the top and, um, you know, get up by the wall and not in include anybody in the wreck. Um, so. You know, feel bad for those that that got involved, but um, it all stems from us leading and the outside cars door slamming us, right? So, I don't know what happened from that, but uh, that's what led to this series of unfortunate events. Just hate it for everybody at Ranch Fuel, Ford, Door Sport Racing. We had a really good showing today, and would love to get them in victory lane, kick off our season with a good, um, you know, a good high note, right? I think points are more important than people realize, but. Uh, yeah, most embarrassing was pulling up, trying to salvage it, not involve anybody, and then ends up, you know, getting a lot of people involved. So hate that for everybody. Sorry. Your crew chief, Fred Lucha, said great job tonight. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, you know, there was, fortunately, great driving by the whole field. When he didn't get to the top, uh, they split him, and only a couple of trucks got a, got a bump in that thing, and so it could have been a lot worse if it weren't for some heads-up driving. Regan? Adam, you were mentioning a, a few moments ago, Nick Sanchez and the laps that he's leading right now. Keep in mind, earlier in the race, caught up in the very first incident and got to give credit to his crew chief, Bono Man and Mannion. These guys did a wonderful job of orchestrating calmly how to repair the truck, get it repaired as quick as they could so they could get him back into the action with everything the way it needed to be. And it is showing right now he's got good speed. Nick told me earlier today his focus this season is stage three. He does not care about the early parts of the races. He wants to be better at the end. He's got an opportunity to show that right now we're with where he's running in the lead. I, I feel like regardless who wins tonight, we're going to say it was a great comeback because almost every driver <laughs> has faced some form of adversity. 19 to go. Sanchez, Taylor Gray, LaJoy, Purdy, and Wood, the top five under caution. Going to be 16 laps to go when we return to the green flag here at Daytona. Craftsman Truck Series opening up 2024. We've cleaned up our ninth caution of the night. I look at our top 10. Some great stories up there because there are so many drivers that have never experienced victory lane. And here they are very much alive late in the going at Daytona. You see Jack Wood right there up on the top five. Jack's never had a top five before. Brett Holmes in sixth, having great runs. <laughs> what about Holmes? He was sliding, sliding off the corner, around backwards, was able to save it out of the wall. Matt Crafton, that early wreck, he was involved in it and still battling for a top five finish. Majeski's truck was really fast early. Haven't heard from him lately, but he's surfaced up toward the front again. A couple of penalties, miscues on pit road that have hurt their track position, but man, always right there. I just 
you know, of, of all the veterans out there, Matt Crafton, looking at all this craziness going on, but yet he just keeps his nose stuck right up in it. That's a guy that's got a lot of fight in him right there. Remember, it wasn't that many years ago that Matt Crafton came off a turn two on the last lap with a lead <laughs> and was, was upside down by the time he got to the middle of the backstretch. That's a lasting image when it comes to the trucks at Daytona. Sanchez LaJoy side by side for the restart. That 77 truck that's behind LaJoy has been a strong pusher tonight. And you can see the front two rows are toe to toe. Those are Spire teammates. Spire made the purchase of KBM, Cobbush Motorsports. And they've got trucks in the hunt to win it. Sanchez driving for Rev Racing. They're a partner at Spire, and he is out front, getting a push from Taylor Gray. That's the second restart in the row that Corey LaJoy has not been able to keep pace initially. Tom Majeski pulls up in front of him, trying to take advantage of that run that he felt like Corey LaJoy was going to make. Back through the trioval. Under green, it's our Craftsman 15 to go. Red Holmes hanging tough. He decides to go to the top side. Green and white car, or green and white truck rather, moving to the outside lane as Michael said. Majeski gets pushed to the outside now. He's by himself in the third lane in that the black truck. This lead pack, Phil, is getting ready to catch the lapper of Matt Mills, who's re reduced speed. He pulls off the racetrack. That's a smart move. Trying to go three wide this late in the race with a slow truck could have been disastrous. Whoa, Mills, very, excuse me, up high, very, very loose was Holmes. This is so aggressive. Got trouble again. Tony Breidinger in the one. The five is Dean Thompson. Teammates at Tricon. It produces our 10th caution of the night. Mm, just kisses the inside safety barrier. See right front tire is flat on the one of Tony Breidinger. She's done a great job tonight. She sure has. She's kept her nose clean. She was involved in a couple scrapes, but not of her doing, certainly. She's going to race on as well. I think she's going to be able to make repairs to that truck, as is the green machine of Dean Thompson. It's Mason Massey in the 0-2. Let's see if we can see what happened. Something happened to Mason Massey, it looks like, and he, he slows on the racetrack. And Tony and the 5 are running nose to tail in the 5, I think, Gets in the back of Tony, pushes her in to what, Mason Massey. What a great job by Stuart Friesen. He had to just patiently sit there and watch those trucks spin and was able to slip through there. Closing on 10 laps remaining. Under caution one more time for the trucks at Daytona. Coming up next, we got a big time matchup in the Mountain West. It's Jalen House and Jaden Ledee in New Mexico at San Diego State in a big time Mountain West showdown coming up right after the truck race on FS1. Looking forward to college basketball that comes your way next out in the Mountain West, New Mexico, San Diego State. And on FS2, roughly 10.30 Eastern time will be ARCA racing coverage. They've moved that race from tomorrow to tonight to make sure they can get it in and beat the rain. You can watch it on FS2. And then when basketball wraps up here on FS1, you can watch the conclusion of the ARCA season opener on FS1. And you can watch it all on the Fox Sports app. I love the Fox Sports app. Catch up with a lot of news and sports there. What do you say? We finish this thing without a, without another caution. What do you think, Phil? I don't know. I, I, I don't feel great about that. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to see it, but I'm in. I'm not optimistic, I should say. What a job Nick Sanchez has been able to do tonight. Got involved. You see the damage to the left rear quarter panel of that game bridge Chevrolet. Let's see if we Michael see if you can grab him on the radio. 
Nick Sanchez, it's Waltrip and the team on the Fox Sports side. How you doing? Doing good. What a crazy race it's been, but you find yourself in control here late. How's the truck driving and can you hang on? Yeah, I mean, the truck's driving good. I think it's better out front. And yeah, I think we could hopefully hang on. There's been a lot of chaos. We've been included in it, so hopefully we just stay out of it. Yeah, it's, it's been a crazy race. So hang in there. Just wanted to check in. Thanks for talking with us. Appreciate it. That's fun for me. I mean, they're in they're in the heat of the battle, but they always cool know the cucumber. Yeah, just like it's just like I'm his spotter. I said it a moment ago. All these drivers in the top ten that have never won. You got Sanchez, and we told his story. Taylor Gray, the youngest driver in the field, couldn't compete in this race a year ago because he hadn't turned 18, and here he is, second year running for the championship and second on track. He's had an impressive ride tonight. Jack Wood doing a nice job in third. Jack Wood is doing a great job. Limited schedule here for BMR Racing. That truck doesn't look like it has a mark. I mean, maybe a little bit of a mark on the left front by the left front headlight, but Jack doing a super job here. We were giving love earlier to Spire. At that time, Raja Karuth was not in the top 10. Here he is, the <laughs> best of the Spire team right now. Fourth, Michael. It's been a great run for Raja. We know he's got the talent behind the wheel to get to victory lane, and it's really cool to see him pace himself and get to this position. Look at his progression steadily toward the front. Very great spirit, too. I mean, just loves what he gets to do. And a smart race by that young man. Yes, sir. He's a college student take, taking classes. He told me in the garage yesterday, I had to miss a Zoom for one of my classes, so he'll have some homework when he's done tonight <laughs> or sometime over the weekend. You go back there in fifth, Tyler Ankrum. He's been one of the strongest trucks all night long. Led the race, had it, had a very loose truck, was able to hang on to it, and he finds himself in a position to win here at Daytona. Yeah, second stage winner, Tyler Ankrum. And what about Corey LaJoy? Corey LaJoy is still my favorite. I said before the race he's going to win it, and he's certainly in a position to do so. I just wonder what's wrong with Corey's truck on these restarts. He's, you know, he's, he's been on the front of one line or there, the outside line, I think, and he, and he just loses the ground so much through one and two. What about that new team in seventh? Spencer Boyd up inside the top ten with his new ride. He's a super speedway winner at Talladega. Look at all the trucks taking the bottom. Corey LaJoy says, I'll take advantage of that. Going to restart on the outside of the front row, my outside second row. 24 trucks on the lead lap. We'll have nine laps remaining when we go green. Update on Stefan Parsons. We saw him in that wreck. They got that truck repaired. He's still on the lead lap in the 20th position. Cody Robot just ahead of him. In the 97, he's in 19th, and we saw Bailey Curry into the inside wall. He's got his truck fixed up. He's in 18th, so they're damaged, but they're not done. Stefan was doing a great job running up in the top five. Look at that truck just snap out from underneath Brett Holmes. There's Bailey Curry. You mentioned him getting into the inside wall. Watch how hard he hits. He hits it pretty hard, but they've made repairs. And there's there's Ben Rhodes getting hit by Tyler Ankrum and then he comes back on the racetrack cuts another tire down and causes this little melee which he apologized profusely for and there's the one I was talking about Stefan running in the top five Christian Eckes gets turned into him. that was a big one Johnny Sauter also involved one of the strongest trucks we've had all night Some heads up driving there from a couple of truckers that. The Dean Thompson, Tony Breitinger. Look at Doza. Brian He's able Doza. to squeeze through there, calmly gets on the brakes and makes it through that wreck. I mentioned 24 trucks on the lead lap. The last of those, Christian Eckes, who just picked up the free pass under this, our 10th caution of the evening. Sanchez Caruth, two second year drivers on the front row, restart nine laps remaining. An early push by the seven of Corey LaJoy on Raja. Corey might not be able to lead these restarts, but he can darn sure push them. 
Raja Karuth jumps out front, drafting help from his teammate. That would be Corey LaJoy. Are they too far out there, Michael? We're going to find this run. out. Look at this run they're going to have. Big push. Gray on Sanchez. The two is on point again. Jack Wood is there. So is Tyler Ankrum. They got too far out, didn't they? Yeah, but it ain't over. <laughs> I mean, this is such intense racing. These restarts are hectic, and then you hope that they can just settle in, but it's not going to happen. We're inside a 10 to go, and there's a trophy in Daytona online. Chase Purdy trying to push Ankrum in that second lane. Brett Holmes hanging around. Don't write off Daniel Dye. Grant Infinger is hanging in that outside lane as well. Look at Corey Heim. He's fought his way up to the top five. Just outside of the top five and six. And he's got four fresh tires. And the way these guys are racing, that could be an advantage. 71 and seven rebounding together. Carruth, a push from LaJoy. Sanchez pulls up to cover him. That's a bold move when you slide up the racetrack like that, knowing there's a push coming. Grand Infinger, Infinger jumps to the outside to make it three wide. Nobody's going with him. Seven to go. Inside lane has it gathered up. Taylor Gray. Oh! oh. Raja turned Nick Sanchez sideways. What a save. See what he can do now. Give a, give him a push on the back. Ooh, oh, there Tyler goes the out of shape. Caution is out. Contact with Purdy. Eckes gets a piece as well. We've seen how loose that truck's been all night long. We said we didn't think that we would go to the end without another caution. Chase Purdy with big damage there on the 77 Bama Buggies truck. 11th caution of the night matches the track record. I can't believe Sanchez saved that truck. It was turned sideways getting in the corner. At 190 miles an hour. There's Timmy Hill in the 56 truck coming to pit road. Chase will take the mandatory trip to the infield care center. There's the 18 truck. We know how loose it's been, like I said, and he finally had it get away from him. Watch this save. This is incredible. Raja right on the back with a push entering the corner. Woo. And, th and that's worse than it even looked. <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah. Watch the 70. Watch the orange and blue truck. That's the 18 of Ankrum. You've got the 77 of Purdy right behind him. He's going to pull up and push him. And just, it just turned him to the inside. Then he tried to save it. It pushed him sideways. Everybody else here just nowhere to go. Christian Eck is getting involved as well. This is ugly. Going to get another look at it here. It's amazing. No more trucks were involved than there were, guys. I was going to say, you know, it's Ankrum that gets shoved out of line and collects some others, but they're all just dancing around. They seem so unstable in the draft. As always, Daniel Dye gives us great pictures. Of everything and I think the trend from last year is continuing. <laughs> everything happens right in front of Daniel Dye. Yeah, but this year it's happening up at the front. <laughs> last year he's running mid pack, which is better, I think. <laughs> better, I think, but I'm not sure. He's had a good night. Picked up seven stage points and has survived so many of these crashes. Time of Jeske was nearly collected in that. Got maybe a little front end damage, but he was able to drive through.
Burns. So he's doing all he can do to control that truck and it just gets away from him. And he turns down into chase. Timmy Hill does a nice job avoiding that just going through the grass. Christian makes contact with Ankrum. Look at that off roading that Timmy Hill is doing through the infield grass jumping up in the air. We saw Grant Enfinger do that earlier. He's in the top 10 right now. Still showing more than 20 trucks on the lead lap. I can't believe there's more than 20 trucks on the lap on I the track. I was going to say we're going to run out of trucks, <laughs> but the reality is we still have a bunch hanging. They're still in the cleanup mode. The laps are winding down here. We get to the start finish line. There will be four to go in the scheduled distance. We're knocking on the door of overtime tonight. This is the point in the race where if you tell your crew chief you think you need a pit, he's going to tell you we're closed. <laughs> <laughs> we've left. Our pick crew left. <laughs> we've, we've loaded up. With Sanchez out front, will step aside. Could it be career victory number one for the driver out of Miami? We've tied the record for cautions for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series here at Daytona. So we have pushed back the start of the ARCA event. We originally thought we'd go green around 1030. That's not going to happen whenever we do get it going. It'll be live on FS2. And after basketball, which follows us on FS1, you can come back to FS1 and watch the conclusion of the ARCA season opener. That was a shot of our front row. Willie Mullins in the three car got the pole and Tim Richmond and the 27 will be to his outside. Just hit four to go. For the trucks. Telling some of the stories of our top 10 earlier. Tanner Gray. I feel like he's been in the <laughs> middle of seven or eight of our 11 cautions. What he's about in the Holmes? top 10? Holmes, I mean, he, he spun out when he was bleeding this thing. He's ninth right now. Ty Majeski started on the pole. And he's had a host of issues still in the top 10. Raja, Waltrip and the team on Fox, do you copy? Man, thought I was on a roll. Maybe he's on channel two, I'm gonna check that. Raja, it's Waltrip and the Fox team, do you copy? doesn't copy. Roger's done a heck of a job. I, was, I just wanted to ask him what it felt like to be in this position to go chase this victory right there on the heels of Sanchez. Does he pick high? Does he pick low? Amanda, what's Roger saying? I can tell you he was talking with his crew chief about that last restart. You'll remember him and Corey LaJoy kind of pulled off from the pack. He was walking him through what to do on this one. He immediately asked on the radio how his new teammate Chase Purdy was doing. But when I saw him earlier in the garage today, he was in a long conversation with Grant Ingfinger. I walked over and I said, hey, what's going on here, guys? And Raja said, we're forever teammates. Here we go. One to go. This could decide it all. Raja is going to jump to the outside and go side by side with Sanchez. He's going to look in his mirror, see who's coming to push. I'm hoping it's Corey LaJoy if I'm Raja. Looks like that's what it's going to be. He had a heck of a push on the last restart. He's got to. Overtime rules You're going to get an extra lap tonight of action at least one two lap shootout if the leader comes back around and takes the white flag the next flag ends the race whether it's the caution or the checkers but if the caution comes out prior to that white flag we'll reset and do it again. Hmm. <laughs> Here's Sanchez radio. I really want to win but at the end I just I just want to bring it home with with a good finish if we can't 
one. Yeah, I mean, uh, ag aggressively safe is what I like to say. You know, it's <laughs> not aggressively stupid. 10 four. Huh. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm sitting in that truck looking out the front windshield leading this race. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm good with not being stupid, but this is Daytona. Aggressively safe. That, that's this a phrase Daytona. I've never heard. Well, it's one that's not going to work yeah. either. We're just going to go for it. You never know when you'll get an opportunity to win Daytona again. That's right. And look at some of the names up front. Sanchez, Carruth, Taylor Gray, Wood, and there's Corey LaJoy. Still in it, still fighting for the victory. And Matt Crafton, he's never missed the playoffs in his career. A win tonight, and he's going back again. <laughs> Let's do this, boys. Can we get two laps in? I hope. Just need one, really, to make it official <laughs> yeah. before we get the caution. Overtime at Daytona. Sanchez Carruth on the front row. Great start by Sanchez, but Carruth and LaJoy are coming hard on the outside. Remember Corey Heim, fresher tires. Can he use those to push harder? He's been quiet all night long, but here he is set up to maybe steal it late. Remember the rule about pushing. They said they were going to enforce that. LaJoy all over his teammate out front. Raja Carruth to the point. Outside comes Taylor Gray pushing Nick Sanchez. Nice move by Sanchez to swing to the outside. LaJoy's come unhooked from Carruth. Remember, once we get the white flag, the next flag will end the race. And the white flag is out. Nick Sanchez, your leader. Jack Wood is up to second. Taylor Gray right there fighting for a win, too. Corey Heim in the mix. Ty Majeski is there. Raja sideways hangs on to it. Sanchez will try to work both. Oh, oh, trouble. And there's a crash. Caution is out. The race is over. Trucks up in the air. Nick Sanchez leading when the caution flag came out. That. Good job, boys. He is going to bring it back around to the checkers. Nick Sanchez, when he was five, taken to a race at Homestead, Miami, by his uncle. He fell in love with NASCAR. And the Florida kid got to win for the first time in his career at Daytona International Speedway. How about that? Raja is going to end up second. Roger did a great job there. Just come up a little bit short. There's Corey LaJoy caught up in this wreck. We saw a truck upside down. It looked like an orange truck. Certainly don't want to speculate and be wrong. Daniel Dye, who did such a nice job, also caught up in this last lap incident. See Daniel taking his helmet off. That's a good sign. Christian Eckes. What a night for Christian Eckes. It's fitting. This race ends under caution. 12 of them tonight, a new track record. I believe that was Taylor Gray that was over. Yeah, I think it was an orange truck the, but, for sure. But you that's see him standing beside the truck. Yeah, it was the, the best case scenario yeah. of flipping because he went up in the air and landed on other trucks and softly sat down. If you got to flip, I mean, that's how you'd like it to go down. A scary scene but we're seeing a lot of drivers walking around outside their trucks and we're thankful for that. The reason we're not showing you the pylon with the running order is because NASCAR will have to go back and determine where people want, where were running at the time of the caution and they had to they had to maintain uh, speed too. They can't just be crashing and then and, and cross that timing line. Let's see what happens here. Raja gets into Jack Wood, turns him around. Watch the 17. Just contact from Daniel Dye, turns him, turns him over. Bailey Curry in the middle of that mess. Matt Crafton sliding along. He keeps his truck pointed in the right direction. Look at Matt storm out of there. Let's ride with Daniel Dye. Our Fox in race reporter. And cameraman. <laughs> Oh, wow. 
unbelievable impact. Daniel had no idea there was going to be a truck right in front of him when he went down that straightaway. Or on top of him, either exactly. one. We've been given the top three by NASCAR. Nick Sanchez, Corey Heim, Raja Carruth. <laughs> First win, Daytona. That's the way to do it. How does how does it get any better than that? We saw last year how talented this young racer was and how a win was just right around the corner. He was a mile and a half away from winning Texas last year. Got turned around on the last lap. To Regan Smith. Well, Nick Sanchez grabs the checkered flag. Nick, you have been so close so many times in the truck series last year. You come to Daytona, you get your first career win. How does it feel? Pretty surreal, especially with how the race started. I'm covered in dirt from it. Um, but just a big thanks to my team, you know, sticking with me all last year. We were winless. It hurt. We should have won. But we got, we, rede we redeemed ourselves in the first race possible. So big thanks to Rev Racing Inspire, Max Eagle, Gainbridge, Dan Powers, everyone that helps us. And definitely going to be a good year. Nick Sanchez, your Crafts and Truck Series winner in Daytona. <laughs> You know what? The news just keeps getting better and better. Winner at Daytona. When he gets to victory lane, he's going to be like, playoffs as well. <laughs> That's a bonus. But when you win at Daytona, it's all about the trophy that you receive here. Amanda? Well, Corey, they say that Daytona is a lot of being at the right place when it matters. You had a relatively quiet night, made it up to the front. How did you make that happen? <laughs> Uh, I guess just not wrecking for the most part. Um, first of all, I hope everyone's okay. That was crazy to see in my mirror. Uh, looked bad. But um, second of all, uh, what a what a SHIT show. I mean, that was crazy. Like, I mean, I've never avoided so many wrecks in my life. I can't believe I have a clean truck. Um, but I'm not going to complain about it. It's truck racing. It happens. But uh, super proud of Truck on Garage and Toyota Racing. Got a little bit of work to do for Talladega with the speed of this thing. But um, I thought the best strategy for me was to lay low and Hopefully be there at the end, and we were, and it uh, looks like we came up one short. Sh one short. That is scary looking. Mm. It's oh. just amazing. But like you said, that's about as soft as you can turn one over. That's exactly right. And it didn't just keep tumbling either like we've seen happen so many times. I don't know if Roger just lost the front end of his number 71 Chevy or what went down there, but he definitely went up the track and made contact. Look at that mess. Mm. Phil, did you see Stefan sliding through there? He anywhere? did get through there. Yes. <laughs> Watch this. Just out of nowhere. Smoke, smoke. Truck. Now, that. Watch it hit the roof. Mm. Man, oh, man. That's on the list of things you don't want to see out your windshield. There goes those There's ballpark. There's the hot dog going by. Ballpark Frank squeezing through. <laughs> Amanda? Raja, there was many ways that I was going to go in this conversation with you, but I uh, saw you hand the phone back that you were just on, and the name said Rick Hendrick. What did that conversation go? Yeah, it's uh, it's all because of him, you know, being in this spot. So I'm uh, really thankful for Mr. H and the Hendrick uh, Automotive Group, along with Spire Motorsports and Chevy, because the only reason I got a ride this year, um, I feel pretty bad about the backstretch there. Corey was doing a great job pushing, and um, you hate to see, you know, trucks get torn up like that. but. Sucks to be that close, but definitely happy for Nick. He's been deserving for a long time and great for the company. Thank you, Raja. Former teammates in the Arkham Menard series at Rev Racing. Well, we can take a deep breath now. All the action is over and Nick Sanchez gets to go and celebrate the best victory of the whole season. And that's victory at Daytona. Mm -hmm. That all those laps a year ago did Sanchez finally pulls into victory lane. Bubba Wallace having a conversation with Raja. 
Reminder of our setup here. The ARCA race that was scheduled for tomorrow has been pulled back to tonight to avoid any issues that we will have weather-wise interrupting our progress with that tomorrow. So when we wrap things up here later on this evening, the coverage will start on FS2. And then when basketball is done, it's coming up next on FS1, New Mexico, San Diego State. You can come back to FS1 for the conclusion of our ARCA season opener, and you can watch all of that on the Fox Sports app. You know, Kevin Bono Mannion is a crew chief for Nick Sanchez, and this is not going to be his first trip to Victory Lane here at Daytona. Jamie Murray's crew chief back in 2010 when he won the Daytona 500. It's when we got that famous call from your brother, Daryl Waltrip. Little Jamie, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and Jamie will be a part of our coverage all weekend long as we get you ready for Sunday's 66 running of the Daytona 500. What a start to this magical motorsports weekend. Race one of the books for the Craftsman Truck Series, and it was a wild one. 12 cautions. And when it was all said and done, in overtime, Nick Sanchez picks up his first career victory. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Congratulations, Nick Sanchez.